the smoke radio for the masses. Headline of this is July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. To Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Yeah, man. Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses. Yeah. Today's Tuesday, February 14th. 46 days into the new year, just 319 days left, and I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I'm your oh so humble host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, man. Tonight, tonight we have very special guest with us. Barry Strom is here. We're going to talk about his new book, Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. No joke. Great book. Got it right here. Tomorrow night, Anna East Salas is joining the show. Thursday night is another Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live. The call in number is 323-825-5045 tonight. We'll be taking your calls. We'll do it. We'll squeeze them in. Don't you worry. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. That's what you want to do. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. Facebook, YouTube, everything is fade to black. It's easy to find. Let's go over to the website. Click it right now. Follow, like, and subscribe. The sandbox is hashtag F2B on Twitter. We don't bite. Come and hang out. And any questions or comments during the show tonight, just use hashtag F2BQ. I will see it. Twitter always runs to my left. And it is live. It is real time. You can email throughout the show. I'll get to as many as I can. Email is... Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Now, uh, my voice is coming back after talking for four straight days, you know, over conscious life. It's coming back. I'm a little short of breath still, but it's good. All right? It's good. My my voice is here. I just don't have uh, the volume, right, the volume that I'm used to. I'm used to being able to shout. And uh, there you go. So it's nice and and easy around uh, uh, the uh, household because everybody knows I can't I can't yell and scream. So there you go. Uh, the best thing for my voice, though, River Moon Coffee. There's a plug. All right, subscribe to our podcast. We have over 600 archive shows right there. Custom apps, Apple and Android, all platforms. Just two dollars a month. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Click on the podcast banner. And while you are there, check out all of our sponsors. Click on their banners over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Use the promo codes that are there in all of the banners for discounts and free shipping because you're a fade or not. It's that simple. All right. Coming up is Contact in the Desert, May 19th through the 22nd in Joshua Tree, California. Uh, Tickets and info over at JimmyChurchRadio.com and ContactInTheDesert.com. Check this out. Speakers include George Norrie, Graham Hancock, Jacques Vallée, Robert Baval, Robert Schock, 
David Wilcock, Corey Good, Jim Mars, Giorgio Sukalos, Richard Dolan, Andrew Collins is going to be there this year. Linda Moulton, Hal Whitley, Streber, David Serrata coming down from the Great White North. And another 30 or 40 great researchers. I've lost count. I could sit here and do the whole list. It's crazy. Contact in the desert. May 19th through the 22nd, of course, we're going to broadcast Friday night. I'll be hosting a, a panel or two on Saturday, maybe even Sunday. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a busy weekend for us. Um, it is one straight, nonstop, never-ending, fade or not party. All right? There's rumors out there right now that River Moon Coffee is going to be there in, in just full frontal, man. It's going to be great. So there you go. Let's get the show cracking. Happy birthday to today. Teller of Penn and Teller is 69. <laughs> Rob Thomas is 45. Rob, the poor guy, you know, Rob Thomas is more famous for his song with Santana, Smooth, that he won the Grammy Award for, right? Than for Matchbox 20. But that's the, that's the, you play the game. Rob played it, and there you go. That song, Smooth, is, you know, Rita and I, the other day, we were uh, driving somewhere, and it, I don't know if it came on the radio, if we were playing some, you know, files or whatever um, in the car, but that song came up. And I got to say, man, Smooth, it, it still holds up, doesn't it? Today, it does. It's a great song. And Rob Thomas is more famous for that than Matchbox 20. All right. Our dead guy's birthday today is the one, the only, Florence Henderson. 1934 to 2016, man. I remember when she passed last year. That was just such a bummer for all of us that, uh, you know, grew up with her and the Brady Bunch. You know, Carol Brady. Oh, Mike. The Brady Bunch, 1969 to 1974. TV Land and Entertainment Weekly ranked her one of the 100 greatest TV icons of all time. Why? Well, because she was. Happy birthday, Mrs. Brady, Florence Henderson. All right. On this day in history, it went down in the year 278. That's right. On February 14th, 278 AD, Valentine... A holy priest in Rome in the days of Emperor Claudius II was executed. Claudius had banned all marriages in, and engagements in Rome. Stupid, I agree, but he did. Valentine, realizing the injustice of the decree, defied Claudius and continued to perform marriages for young lovers in secret. So they killed him. And that's why today is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I didn't want to put a damper on it, but you know, there's a reason for it. And it just shows you how we've kind of messed things up over the years. But I hope that uh, you have uh, spent it uh, with the one that you love. I did. Rita and I. There you go. Happy Valentine's Day, Rita. Fader fact. In 1970, America had over 50,000 pay toilets in 1970. Man, you remember that? You had to put the dime in, in the, uh, what was that thing called? On the thing? It was like called dime meter or something, <laughs> dime lock And you couldn't put two nickels in either, man. It had to be a dime. Well, by 1980, there were almost none. I tried to find out today. I started thinking about pay toilets, the conspiracies of pay toilets. I don't think there are any. When was the last time you saw a pay toilet? Tell me in Twitter. I don't think they exist anymore. Tonight, Barry Strom is here. We're going to talk about his new book, Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. Tomorrow night, Ana East Salas is going to be here. And, of course, Thursday night is another Fader Night with John Rappaport. Call the numbers 323-825-5045 and... We're going to take your calls tonight because this book is excellent. I have it right here sitting next to me in the bunker. Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. And I'm going to go over this tonight uh, with Barry. 
But the back cover, okay, spirits speak about we have everything here from alien secrecy to devil vortexes, uh, King Richard III, weather, harp, chemtrails, Bigfoot, Nazi rocket technology. We have uh, the Malaysian uh, Flight 370, of course, Kennedy, Illuminati, the New World Order, the World Trade Center, weapons of mass destruction, the Knights Templar, the Holy Grail, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, at Jimmy Hoffa, uh, John Benet Ramsey, all Princess Diana, Sandy Hook. It's all here in this book. Spirits speak of conspiracies and mysteries by Barry Strom. He is our guest tonight. So stay right there. It's going to be one of those shows. Only the best for the fader knots. Well, let me jump into this. Uh, this past weekend, and if you were hanging out with Rita and I, and a few of you were, um, uh, we went out for breakfast, lunch, kind of a breakfast. Uh, what do you call that? A brunch. <clears throat> with, uh, excuse my uh, throat, my voice. Um, hang on. Oh, man. Thank goodness for the cough button. Uh, I'm good, too, by the way. I don't know. I, I, I feel fine. I just don't have pipes. Uh, okay. If you were hanging out this past weekend, uh, Rita and I and a few of the Fader Knots, uh, we had a chance to sit down with Danny Sheehan. And I wanted to tell him about my little Dakota Pipeline rant from last week, which ended with the unanswered question, where is the oil going? Now, I did lay out my research for him in advance. I wanted him to know that I did everything I could in the public domain to find answers. You know, I wanted to, to you know, I just wasn't going willy-nilly with asking him these questions, which is very important to note. I really wanted him to know I couldn't find the answer anywhere. Where is the oil going? Not on the partner's website. Not, there's no government info or even with the protesters themselves, right? Okay. Oh, somebody just posted pictures of us eating with Danny, right? <laughs> Check that out. Who's doing this? K28. All right, well, here, wow, that happened in real time. You guys are on top of your game. Okay, so this is me and Danny. Go over to Twitter right now, everybody. Uh, hashtag F2B. Follow me on Twitter, at J Church Radio. And here's, here's Danny and I sitting and, and talking. Now, wow, it kind of backs up my BS, doesn't it? That's pretty cool. So I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it on the partners' website, the government websites. I went everywhere, and... And even the the Sioux websites, the Indian websites themselves, the protesters couldn't find anything. Everything shows the oil uh, going to Pakota, Illinois, and their tank farm. And then they mention it going south to the Gulf of Mexico. And that's where the oil trail ended. Now, Danny straightened me out on this. This was Danny's answer. The bulk of the oil is ultimately going to China. All of it is being exported. None of it will be refined and kept in the United States. I, the research that I found said that it was going south to the Gulf of Mexico, and that's where the oil trail ended. But he said it's going north up to the Great Lakes and being exported that way. Either way, it's leaving the country. And if this is true, and I suspect that it is, and I trust Danny, I do. If it's true, it will show everyone um, that it doesn't matter about your politics, by the way. It just doesn't. It will show everyone that big oil and big money has nothing to do with you, ever. Doesn't care about you. And certainly doesn't care about the United States. I don't want to hear about jobs. I don't want to hear about that. I don't know. I will say this. I'm going to say it loud. Any oil from the United States should stay in the United States. Period. That's it. In my mind, it makes absolutely no sense at all to export any oil for any reason. Not while we are still importing oil. 
right? It doesn't make any sense. My brain says that there is something really wrong here. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all. I'm all about America first. I always have been. I said that way before Trump was ever on the scene. Way before Trump was on the scene. I had talked about how things started to change back in the 80s. I was confused then. You know, automobiles being manufactured outside of the United States. All the television stuff being manufactured here. We're importing everything from Japan and China and, and moving country, companies outside. It, there is no more made in the USA. How, how many years have I said that on this show? So it's not a red, blue, political, party-defined statement that I'm making here. It's just in general. Remember those made in the USA? Remember those tags? Get them on your clothes? Remember those? They're all gone, aren't they? When was the last time you saw that? So I have always waved this flag. It's all gone. All we make here is software. <laughs> At least it seems that way, right? Seriously. But, uh, well, at least that's what they want us to think. That tech is our answer to jobs. And it isn't. So anyway, let me move on. That is the conspiracy. And it's playing right out in front of us right now. And I'm saying this very clearly here. That oil should stay right here. And, and I don't get it. Nobody is speaking about this. And I, you know what? I will. The, if you are America first, I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican, if you believe in this country, what the hell are we doing exporting oil? That's ours, man. We'll import it. If somebody else wants to export it and get it here to the United States, fine. But here... Uh, let's bring down oil. Let's bring down the price of gas. Let's support. Uh, let's man. What are we doing? It makes no sense, does it? The cost of importing oil, putting it on a tanker, getting it across the world to get here and then pump it. What sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense at all. Oil should stay here. And while that conspiracy is playing out and it's it's right in front of us. They are hiding it so well, and nobody is saying anything, well, I am right now. And then, last night, during the show, last night, Trump's national security advisor, Michael Flynn, resigned. And, and again, I don't do politics on the show. I do the conspiracy on this show. That's what I do. And last night... His national security advisor, Flynn, resigns. Okay, cool, whatever. I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. It's not a big deal. You know, it happens. But the issue is, at least with me, is the real conspiracy that is playing out, again, right in front of us, just like the Dakota Pipeline oil. This is friggin' glaring, man. It's blinding. But nobody's saying anything. Nobody's talking. You know, it's so funny. CNN with their 24-hour disgusting Trump watch, right? They're not saying anything. Fox isn't saying anything. You know, BBC's not. Nobody's talking about You know what? Because they, they can't handle the truth. But I can. So listen to me. I will speak. The basics are the basics here. When the issue was raised back in January about Flynn talking to the Russian ambassador and the subject of Russian sanctions came up then, he said he didn't do it. Well, he lied. That's it. Case closed. There's nothing else to discuss here. He lied to me. He lied to you. He lied to Trump. He lied to Pence. He lied to the entire country. Folks, listen to me. This is supposed to be the national security advisor to the president of the United States. And he lied. We know that he's supposed to lie. It's his job. And I'm cool with that. I really am. You know, he just that's just the way it is. It's the very lifeblood of Washington, the conspiracy of everyday life. That's the way they play the game. But 
dude lied to his people. He lied during the transition to the White House out of the gate. Wait, wait, not really. The gate wasn't even open yet. He lied. He lied. The National Security Advisor to POTUS lied and got caught. But anyway, this is where the conspiracy gets nuts and it gets out of control. And you know what? You got to love me. You just do for pointing all of this out. It's just crazy. Because now, in the wake of Flynn's resignation, President Trump is trying to turn it into illegal leaks from the inside of the administration that is the issue. And not that he lied. It's like, how do you put that spin on it? Dude lied. He lied. He lied to you. Seriously, the spin on this conspiracy is real. Definition of conspiracy is two or more people conspiring together to commit a crime. And that is what is going on here. Conspiracy is the new normal, folks. That's what is going on here. He lied. The spin on the conspiracy is real. Using words like misled, (laughs) misled, dude lied. Nobody wants to use that word, misled. I mean, seriously, it's like me going up, you know, sorry, mom, dad. I didn't lie to you when I told you I didn't wreck the car. I misled you. (laughs) Yeah, right. Misled. And it goes, it goes way beyond that. I'm just doing the setup here. When I hear someone say, well, he didn't remember what they talked about. He just forgot to mention it. It's no big deal. The real issue here is that it was leaked. No, it doesn't work that way. Sorry. I'm going to stand up and call a spade a spade here. He's supposed to be the national security advisor, which means he's one of the smartest people in the world. That's it. He remembers everything. He remembers his conversation with the Chinese restaurant when he orders takeout, word for word. And he also remembers what he said to the friggin' Russian friggin' ambassador. So don't feed me this crap. Don't do it. You're trying to to mislead the American people. You're lying. Don't do it. Now, the issue of did Trump tell him what to say or Flynn discussed with Trump in advance of that phone call, I don't care. That None of that matters. What is important, I mean, that just is not important at all. I don't care. I really don't care. What is important is that he lied to the nation and to his boss, and he got caught. By who? The NSA. That's right. The leak itself is raising serious questions in my mind. Because when the intelligence community captures phone calls of an American inside the U.S., Even if the discussion involves a foreign national, and in this case, the Russian friggin' ambassador, steps must be taken to shield the American caller's identity, right? Right? No. In this case, and this is where it just gets bizarrely crazy. So listen to every word that I say. In this case, Trump and the White House got caught by the NSA. And there are, make no mistake about this, there are transcripts of all of his calls. Why? Because all of our calls are recorded. Every single one. Not only you and I, as Edward Snowden has told us all about it, everybody in the White House, even Michael Flynn, All of his calls were recorded, and there are transcripts of them. Be very careful of what you wish for, Washington. You wanted this put into play. Now it's coming back to bite you. 
the National Security Advisor was spied on (laughs) by the NSA. Think about this. And I love it. You watch. Over the next few days, you will start to hear reports from the NSA about calls to Russia. It's going to happen, and it's about to get ugly. I am never wrong, ever. You heard it here first. I want the best for this country, and I'm really trying here. I'm trying hard. I really am. But these kinds of games being played out on us by the NSA, the White House, press secretaries, releases, leaks, Trump, whatever. This could be Obama in the White House. I don't care. It's all the same. And I'm not going to stand for it. This conspiracy is real. And we were told once again Things were supposed to be different. Remember that? Well, once again, another round in Washington, and things are just the same. Nothing has changed. I'm doing my best not to point and laugh. I'm doing my best, but I really want to. But I'm not. Why? Because these are crazy times, and we really need to keep our heads straight right now. You need me to tell you the truth. That's all. I need you guys to stay focused. But I will be the one to yell when the conspiracy slaps you in the face. And with that, I'm going to say it. You are welcome. Why? Because you're a fade or not. And I'm here to tell you the truth. Tonight, our guest is Barry Strom. His book, Spirits Speak. (laughs) <laughs> on what? On conspiracies and mysteries. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. We'll be back with author Barry Strom right after this. Stay with us. Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black. You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hi, folks. In a world of GMO, genetically modified organisms, that is, chemicals, processed foods, and a healthcare system that's unraveling like a cheap suit, it's time to prepare. God created herbs, and herbs help man. Our body can heal itself, just sometimes we need assistance. You need some help? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. Our mild detox is quite powerful with its unique blend of eight different herbs. And if you're looking for more, our non-GMO 
supplements will help you with different needs you might have. Health should be a top priority. Take care of your health naturally. Log on to get the tea. Dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Give your body a treat. Let the herbs do their thing naturally. Read all the testimonies on the website. Get the tea dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Sickness and viruses are like intruders and herbs are like warriors. Let the tea work for you. That's get the tea dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Kletsky with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This Mass- is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Barry Strom. Tomorrow night, Ana East Salas is going to be here. Thursday night is Fader Night. Open lines all night long. Of course, John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live. Barry Strom is a graduate of Lehigh University with a business management degree. He also obtained a civil engineering license and worked in the construction and stone quarry industries for most of his life. After being a non-believer for many years, Barry discovered an ability to communicate with spirits on the other side and use the information obtained to publish four books. Spirits speak of conspiracies and mysteries. We're going to talk about that tonight. Afterlife, what really happens on the other side, haunting in history of the Battle of Gettysburg, And Strom's current work, Aliens Among Us, Exploring Past and Present, is based on the information obtained by channeling the spirit of a deceased alien. His next release, Spirit Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries, is available right now for advanced purchase. Everything is over on Amazon. The links are there at JimmyChurchRadio.com. And I would like to welcome, for the first time, to Fade to Black, Barry Strom. Barry, good evening, sir. Hey, thank you for having me. It's an honor. No, the honor is all mine. But, Barry, you know what the cool thing is? Right now, you get the first-time guest disclaimer. I love first-time guests, right? I, I just do. And and you get the disclaimer tonight. And that disclaimer is, this is just you and I sitting on my couch as friends. Where the conversation starts, it starts. Where it ends, it ends. But we're going to end as friends. Are you ready? I am so ready. Okay. Yes. I want you to be nervous. You're supposed to go disclaimer, dude. What's going on? But anyway. No, no. That's not the first disclaimer I've heard. <laughs> now, uh, okay. Before we get into the book, because there's a lot to cover here. The book is excellent. And uh, the uh, I, I started to read a little bit of the back cover tonight uh, to the audience because the list is cool. It's long. And it's it, it, it feels like... Uh, everything that we love and we cover on the show is all in this book. And that is amazing. So all of the fader knots go and get it. Um, it's excellent illustrations, everything it's thick, it's heavy and it's, and it's hardcover. That's as a book should be. And so, it took a hell of a long time to write. It, I can too. only imagine because <laughs> you've got, uh, let me see here. You probably have 10, 20, 30. Yeah. Probably a solid 30 different, um, conspiracies and mysteries are covered here um so there you go it's it's a lot of research a lot of work and uh congratulations on that but something very curious struck me here because you were a non-believer and oh and, absolutely and, and so absolutely. when and now non-believer is a big that, that means a lot of different things right so were you a non-believer in just like everything, the paranormal, UFOs, lost history, Egypt, all things fringe? You were on the straight and narrow? You were one of those? You were one of them, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I was uh, really one of them for until I was about sixty years old. I made fun of people like myself <laughs> and me. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. What happened? What changed? Well, uh, I bought this building in Pennsylvania about twenty-five years ago, and it was an old shoe factory. It dates back to eighteen seventy-seven, and we converted it to an antique gallery. And through the years, I was doing other things. And I, I had a staff running the place. And they kept telling me about all this weird-ass stuff that was going on around the building. And I thought they were smoking pot, drinking booze, you know, all the good stuff. Right. All the things. I mean, I'd seen things like that, too. But I had a heck of a hangover the next day. <laughs> yeah, and uh, So, I mean, I was laughing at these folks. Well, what, and, were, they, what were they seeing? What, what did they say was going on? They were hearing footsteps. They would have lights turned on. They would have doors locked behind them. Uh, just all kinds of things, all of which I, I figured there was absolutely no way. So when the economy changed about 10, 15 years ago, I had to spend more time back here at the store. And all of a sudden, I started to realize, you know, maybe there is a little something going on around here. And I had a friend that had a, a professional paranormal investigative team. So I said, well, why, you know, why don't you come on in? Let's check things out. And uh, I would just love to sit in on this because I know you guys are all full of crap. And I want to be here to laugh when uh, nothing happens. So he comes in one night, brings about 20 investigators, and we break up into teams. And I'm teamed up with a, with a psychic, a woman. You know you, and, say you set yourself up. You know this. Oh, man, did I set myself up good on this <laughs> Oh, one. man. Okay, continue, and, continue. And apparently the spirits were just waiting for this idiot to come and in and go through this. That's exactly what's about to happen, okay? Oh, yeah. So we break up into these teams, and the lights are out in the store, and we're in the far corner, and, and the psychic is there, and they give me this EMF meter, which I have really no clue. I watched a couple shows. You know, I figured if the lights went on and off on the K2, it'd be a good thing. I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, the psychic says, I'm reading, I'm, I'm hearing this little girl, and uh, she's actually singing a nursery rhyme to me, and now, uh, now she's saying she wants to show us her pink doll. And then the, the psychic goes, oh, and her name's Clarissa. I go, yeah, right. So I said, Clarissa, if you're here, why don't you make my meter go off? And the damn meter starts blinking in my hand. I went, that's really weird. So uh, the psychic says she really wants to show us her doll. So I said, Clarissa, uh, and I, I've watched some shows. So I said, can you make this thing blink once for yes and twice for no? And it blinks once. So I said, okay, we're going to take a shot at this. So I said, would you like to show us where your doll is? Blinks once. Okay. So pitch dark in the store. And we start going across one of the aisles. We come to the first aisle, and I said, Clarissa, would you like me to turn here? And the meter blinks twice. No. So go ahead, come to the next aisle. And I say, Clarissa, would you like me to turn here? Blinks twice again. No. So we go on to the third aisle and say, Clarissa, how would you like me to turn here? And it blinks once. So we turn left, go about 10 feet down the aisle, and all of a sudden, everything stops. And Psychic says, I can't read her anymore. I've, I've lost her. And I said, Clarissa, can, are you here? And nothing happened. So, I thought, man, that was really, really strange. So we go back, sit down. About a half an hour later, it's time to take a break. And I go, I go to the other end of the store, and I'm turning lights on because I don't want anybody killing themselves in here. Right. I'm, tur I'm turning on lights, and I'm coming back the aisle where we lost her from the opposite direction. And I look up where we lost her, and in the case where we lost her is a pink doll. Shut up. Uh-huh. Wow. She, she had taken us 150 foot through that store in the dark with three commands on the K2. And what must have happened is when, you know, when she got close, she just went to the doll, and we lost contact with her. But there's the doll, and I went, holy crap. She you know, thought there, there must be something to this. Right. She thought you could see it, probably. Yeah, well, I wound up, I bought the doll from the dealer, and we still have it on display here at the store. And Clarissa is, a, 
she's a regular friend here now and she shows up. We can actually talk to her on the ghost box and uh, she still has her doll to play with. Wow, that's nuts. So, well, let me ask you this, too, as well, before we move on. Mm -hmm. Um, Where's the store located? The store is about eight miles from Gettysburg. So, which which is... I don't, everybody, I don't know if everybody's familiar with Gettysburg, but it was a three-day battle during the Civil War where there were 52,000 casualties. So, it was one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War, and we're about eight miles from the battlefield. So, you've got, you're in Spirit Central. Oh, I'm, I'm beyond Spirit Central. Right. This, and, and as I was to find out, antiques have many spirit attachments to them. Uh, we have, we've had items here in the store with, with spirit attachments. And I think this was all part of the show to, you know, to show me that, yeah, there really are ghosts in this place. And we had an oil painting in here. And it was uh, probably painted in the late 1800s. And with... When my psychic friend was here, she said his name is, you know, there's a spirit with it, and his name is Joseph. And oh, and oh, and he's telling me he doesn't like the music you play here in the store. And I said, okay, he's going to have to put up with it. What what, so, what what kind of music, Barry? Well, you know, we play classics, sometimes the Beatles, you know, sometimes some older stuff. Okay. Never classic or anything like that. So anyway, one day I'm, st- I'm, you know, I'm just getting used to this ghost thing. So I'm standing up in the front of the store at the checkout, and this woman comes up front and she says, "I've got a, I've got an item back here. It's talking to me." And, okay, well we hear that a lot. You know, the people come in. If it speaks to me, I'll buy it. So I walk back, and she takes me into the booth, and I look, and it's the booth with this oil painting of Joseph in it. So I said to her, "Would you mind telling me exactly how this is talking to you?" And she said, well, I'm sensitive, and he's told me that he doesn't like your music here, and he would like me to take, take him home with me. So I want to buy the painting and take him home where he'll be more happy. Is it Chief and, Joseph, by the way? No, no. It's a guy just, you know, this plain old dude's in this oil painting. Oh, I but got you. I was thinking Chief Joseph. It was an Indian thing. Okay, so it's just no, no. It was just a portrait of this guy. I'd never seen him before, but he apparently liked his portrait of no, right. a lot, and he was still with it. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, she buys a fifteen hundred dollar oil painting just because it was talking to her. So n- now I'm really starting to believe in ghosts. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have you changed the music? You know, ghosts like Van Halen. That's what probably what you need to go with. Yeah, uh, we do a lot of Beatles, and we do, I don't. I'm not sure we have any Van Halen. I got to talk to my wife and see if she has any hidden away. But, uh. <laughs> so now, when you talk about uh, communicating with spirits, how are you starting to uh, work out those details? Uh, what are your techniques? What's your style? Well. I started out just simply with a ghost box, like most people do. Uh, we had great results here with the ghost box. Uh, spirits were waiting to set me up with that deal, too. I mean, I have one website called Ghosts of Golden Lane, and I've got audios on there in the ghost box. Sounds just like the spirit sitting next to you talking to us. Yeah, it's crazy. They, the ghost yeah. box freaks me out. I mean, it does. It really does. So, um, okay, well, please continue. So the, well, are you able to now, are you comfortable enough where you uh, can make these connections and communicate pretty much when you want to sit down and do it? And do you think that the spirits are now comfortable with you too as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, since I'm, since, once I really started to understand what's going on, uh, we explained to them that, you know, we love to have them here. They're welcome. They want to stay here. Uh, since we've learned the board channel, we've actually been able to talk to them. We have eight ghosts here that worked here when it was a shoe factory, and and we've talked to them. Uh, it's <laughs> basically I can pull that ghost box out and talk to them anytime I want. It's, wow, this is this is a really strange place. It sounds fun too, as well. Are you ever? Uh, well, you know, fun is you know it's different to different people, but it sounds fun. Is it, are you ever scared? Are you, you know, does it ever get to that point? Or for you, is it just fun? Well, it's mostly fun. I'm startled, but I'm not scared. You know, it's, it, things, when th- when something happens, it'll startle you. 
uh, the other night I I had done a radio show and it was about midnight and I was walking out of the store and I locked the door and I'm very careful with security late at night here, obviously. Right. And and I, I blocked the door and all of a sudden in my ear, I hear a woman's voice say, hi, that loud. And I jumped and turned around and there was absolutely nobody there. So this female ghost wanted to say, uh, let me know that she was here. And she, she startled me, but she didn't scare me. Yeah, I mean, there's a big difference. You're not, when you're not ready for somebody to say hi to you, it's, uh, it startles you. <laughs> oh, man. It does sound fun. I'm, 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 I'm kind of tripping out. Um, <laughs> I, I have my own views, my own takes on this. I, I just, I leave the spirits alone. Right, I just do. I have enough gear here, and I could, I could go out and go, ghost hunt and stuff. Me, I just leave it to the professionals, right? And and that it just it just kind of freaks me out because I know it's real, and I just don't want to mess with it. But uh, thank goodness, you know, we have you to do that. Um, well, it's definitely real, as I as I found out the hard way. It's <laughs> sometimes it's beyond real. Now you must have had because of this book and your other books too as well. You must have had a a, a real uh, uh, love for history, right? And mysteries and conspiracies and American history, world history, because it's all covered in this book. When did you come up with the idea uh, to do this? Was there something revealed in one of your communications with the other side that you were able to go, hey, wait a minute, I can actually find out about historical events is uh, tell me how that happened. Well, we, we realized we could communicate with historic figures in my afterlife book. I have a whole chapter where we communicated three times with Ulysses Grant. And he, you know, there's a whole story in there about he and his brother and stuff and all the information he gave us. But as part of that communication with him one night, we started talking about the Lincoln assassination and he was very, re I asked him, you know, what happened and he was very reluctant, but he finally tells me who was responsible for the, for the Lincoln assassination. And it was the secretary of war Stanton. So I thought, man, this is really kind of cool. So I got, when I finished the alien book, I started asking questions about different conspiracies. And I found out that we actually had the ability that we could board channel with some of the of the spirits that actually lived these conspiracies. And once we started doing it and we would request these spirits, we found out that they actually are very anxious to tell their stories. Uh, what was the first it, one? What was what what happened first? Uh, I think one of the first that we actually attempted to do was with Jack Kennedy because that's the most famous of the conspiracy theories out there. So uh, one, uh, and let me tell the listeners a little bit of background how we do this. We do board channeling. Uh, we were introduced to board channeling from friends out in Salt Lake City that have been doing it for 30 years. And we started studying how to do this. And we actually have a special board. It's not a Ouija board. Uh, the configurations of it, are, all the letters and numbers are, it's in a circle, certain commands, and we have a glass surface on it. And instead of the planchette that you're used to on a Ouija board, we actually use a small beaker of hot poured quartz. And the quartz is a crystal and it helps us bring the, the signals in better from the spirits. And we put lemon oil on it to lubricate it. And then my wife will get on one side, I'll get on the other. And we each put two fingers on this little glass and this thing will literally fly around the board and spell out messages. And we put it, uh, we always have a camera on it. So we have video and audio record of everything we do. So when you read any of my books and you see the exact quotes, I can back that up with a video where that message was given to us. Now, I'm just a messenger. Sometimes uh, there may be some mistakes in the messages. But I try to pass them on just as they're given to us. And most times they are highly accurate. Wow. Wow. And uh, the the lemon oil and beaker, I could see that with the glass top. 
it's like right it just goes i have i have um a video a couple of youtube videos up on my website at spiritspredict.com but you can there's a page devoted to board channeling and you can go in and click on that page and you will see the configuration of our board uh we have this we use a very special prayer protection every time we do it and the prayer has actually been given to us by the spirits. So, and we let the spirits design this board. So what we're doing on it is exactly what the guides on the other side want us to do. As I say, we, the prayer that we use is on the website and a little explanation. And there's a couple links where you can go down and watch us actually board channel. And you'll be amazed how fast that thing flies. Sometimes it'll go so fast that we have trouble writing the letters down. Right. Well, Barry well, has you, Barry yeah. has three uh, websites, everybody. Spiritspredict.com, messagesofheavens.com, uh, and ghostofgoldenlane.com. And all of the links are over at uh, jimmychurchradio.com. So uh, you can actually get quick access there. Now, one, okay, so let's get to Jack. Let's get to uh, JFK. Okay. Uh, who were you uh, communicating with? Well, we, I asked for the spirit, and in comes Jack Kennedy himself. And when, we, when I realized, I started asking him some questions, and I realized that we actually were talking to the spirit of, the, of a past president of the United States. So I said to him, I said, uh, how would you prefer that I refer to you? Do you want me to call you Mr. President? And it spells out the message, no, just call me Jack. And we, I had prepared a whole list of questions before we asked for his presence. And I started going through some of these questions and his answers were historically accurate. Um, he gave us names that appear in conspiracy theories. He told us what happened. He told us the name of the shooter. Oh, who? Um, okay. Okay. So slow down there, Barry. Pump oh, the brakes. I was, I was getting carried away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Pump the brakes on this truck, man. Okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's back up a little bit here. He said who right. the shooter was. And, okay. Uh, who? Uh, well, we, we got to give away a couple of secrets here. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. No who, problem. Who did I, he say the I, shooter I so, was? I got so many conspiracies. <laughs> I know. Right? I had to stop working on them. The book was getting too long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who was the shooter? A fellow by the name of Frank Sturgis. Oh, it was Frank Sturgis. Okay, interesting. Was was he the only uh, uh, the only trigger man? No, no. There were actually five trigger men there. Uh, they only knew he did two of them. One a shot with, from the grassy knoll, and from uh, actually the kill shot took place from the roof above the sixth floor. They they set it up that they could. Uh, that Oswald would be framed. And then the shooter actually fired his round from the roof just over top so that the angle of the kill shot was almost identical to what it would have been from the sixth floor of the depository. So nobody could tell the difference. Did he say who the, uh, who, well, I mean, who was, the, who, who instructed, who, who wanted this to happen? Did he go there? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah continue who was it <laughs> well i mean because it, and i'll tell you why i'll tell you why barry uh -huh. why it's so interesting here uh there are, were so many uh groups and people out there that had reason enough right oh yeah <laughs> you, yeah, you, absolutely. you had the mafia you had cuba you had russia you had the new world order you had the ufo side of things you had the cia uh, he had his list, and he was Catholic, too, as well. He was young. He oh, was yeah. good-looking. All reasons, right? So, uh, if you know what I mean. And I'm not being tongue-in-cheek here. Um, no, no, no. There was, there was a long list. A long and, and, list. And many reasons why this took place. Okay, so why Sturgis, and who told Sturgis to do this? A gentleman by the name of Lyndon Johnson. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I could see all of that. Um, okay. Well, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was when the Kennedys told Johnson that he would not be on the ticket as vice president second term. So all of a sudden, Johnson realizes that he's doesn't he's not going to if he's not on the ticket, he's not going to be able to run for president. 
So it's now or never. Something has to take place to make him president before the expiration of Kennedy's first term. So Mike Barrett just jumped in on Twitter. He goes, no, it was Lee Harvey Oswald and J.D. Tippett. You know, it, it, th- this is what... I can No, you want me to tell you what the role of J.D. Uh, Tippett? Yeah. I can do that, too. <laughs> sure, sure. Straighten Mike Barrett out. That's what you need, you know. All right. Tippett was part of the conspiracy. But Tippett chickens out. Ticket, Tippett was supposed to pick up Oswald. And then Tippett was supposed to kill Oswald. Well, Tippett chickens out and doesn't pick Oswald up. And that is why this whole th- that, that's the whole reason he ever got arrested was because Tippett chickens out of the conspiracy. Right. So, so once he doesn't pick Oswald up, they immediately assassinate Tippett to cover that trail. And now they've got to go through the whole thing with Ruby to, to get Oswald killed. Yeah. But yep. that's that's why Tippett was killed. Yep, yep, yep. I, 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 I totally agree with you. Um, the, the when, when we talk about a conspiracy here when it comes to JFK, there's only a few things that I need to, to prove the conspiracy. Now, who was involved and how big and how wide? Well, that matters, but it's not what's important here. It's either... Oswald was alone or not. That's it, right? And so for Oswald to get arrested in that movie theater, for them to find it, for them to know, they knew in advance exactly what they were doing here. And that proves the conspiracy, you know, and, that, right. that, and you just need to go out and, and um, uh, above and beyond that and, and figure things out. But that right there says to me, there's something else going on here. He wasn't a lone gunman. They knew exactly where he was. And that's- well, of course, of course. He was supposed to be going to the theater. I mean, he was part of it, and they had ordered him to go to the theater, but Tippett was supposed to kill him before he got there. Right, right, right. And if, if he was a lone gunman, if he was by himself, it's Dallas. You know, all the confusion is going on back uh, in Dealey Plaza. You, If you were the lone gunman and you were able to slip out of there, you go to Dallas and you disappear. And they don't, if they're looking for you or whatever, they don't find you for a week or two or you slip out of the country. They find you. That's what happens. They don't find you the same day <laughs> in a dark movie theater, no less. That's it. And it's just really, really funny to me. That uh, that was the story that they wanted to feed America, and and they bought it. It's 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 hilarious. And here we are. How many years later, uh, we now know this this was uh, uh, a real real conspiracy. Oh, is, and it's so deep. I, I mean, I don't know if any of you or the listeners are familiar with Dorothy Kilgallen. Oh, of course. Uh, okay. Well, she died. She has an interview with Jack Ruby in jail. And then she says she's telling her friends that she's going to blow the lid off the conspiracy based on based on that interview. And then all of a sudden, Dorothy Kilgallen mysteriously dies. So she was part of it. And actually, uh, I read on the news that the D.A. up in New York is going to reopen the investigation into uh, her death. Well, we've got to take a break right here, Barry. So let's do it. And uh, when we come back, we've uh, only got so much time. And what's great about this book is we should do like a three-part show. And we're going to start going down the list here. When we get back, our guest is Barry Strom. The book, Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. More with Barry right after this short break. Stay with us. Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Pat Dealey and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. 
This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're of the Honey Brothers. Well, the... <laughs> yes. We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tepe. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. I went from being able to work 14, 16 hours a day with no problem to where I could barely walk a block to the store. I went on to the phytonutrients about six months ago, and within a couple of months, my medical doctor had cut my prescriptions down in a a little bit smaller dosage. The next time I went back, a month later, I walked into the doctor's office, and he says, my gosh, what's happened to you? You don't even look like the same person. He looked at my legs and the swelling had gone down. My blood pressure was down. The venous stasis ulcers that I had had on my legs for the last four or five years because of the poor circulation were all healed, and I'm feeling far better. The new challenge will allow you to receive two months of Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies free, and we'll even ship them to you free. Call now for details. Call 1-800-2468-751 or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TALK. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. All right, welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. You can follow me on Twitter right now at JChurchRadio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Our guest tonight, Barry Strom, we're talking about his book, Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. And Barry, okay. I'm going to go with now I I could jump around. We could go in order, right? (laughs) We could jump around, but I was just looking at a Twitter and somebody just said, please tell us about nine 11. So let's kind of go there. Let's start there. Um, Did you choose the subject or did it come to you? And who did you speak to when it came to the world trade center? Mm. Uh, when it came to the World Trade Center, I just spoke to our to uh, the ordinary spirit guides about it, and they seemed very knowledgeable. And I asked them a couple questions, and <clears throat> I asked them if it was an in- inside job, and they said that it wasn't. They said that President Bush knew that something was was going to happen, but he did not know what it was. Did you, what was your, uh, what was your feelings about 9-11 going into this? Did you think there was a conspiracy? I thought it was a conspiracy. Right. Especially, I especially thought the uh, Pentagon hit was, was not with an airplane. Right, right. uh, A missile or something like that. Yeah. So. I, I was very surprised by their answers on that one. And as I say, I put, when I write what they tell me, I'm. I'm a messenger, and please don't shoot the messenger. Right, right. Interesting. Okay, well, let me, did it, okay, did it change your opinion about the World Trade Center? Well, I still have serious doubts about it myself. Right. Uh, But 
I mean, I, I, I have a friend who had a friend that was there and at the Pentagon, and he swears it was an airplane, so I don't know. Right, right. And if, oh, man. And see, <laughs> and with what you're doing, you know, you kind of want to uh, have faith in what you're doing, that th the spirits are telling you the truth, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, but sometimes what they tell me is so far out there that I have trouble believing what they're telling me. Um, oh, man. You know, it's, it's weird. In my opinion about 9-11, uh, no, I'm not going with nuclear tactical nukes or holograms or, you know, I, no, I'm not going there. But what, what I think is the conspiracy here is that the White House, Washington, D.C., and Saudi Arabia, everybody knew that it was going to happen and they didn't stop it that to me for bin laden's family to be in airplanes when everything is grounded in the united states and they are allowed to fly out that just tells me that they, they knew that the bin laden family was involved and that they did this and that is uh to me much more horrific than tactical nukes right it really is that, yeah, well, that kind of fits in with what they said. Right. You know, they, they said they knew something was going to happen. What they said was that they didn't know where it was going to happen or when. Oh, that is... Phew. Okay, so let's just let that go. Let's let's move yeah, on. We'll, we'll, I mean, we'll, that, we'll let that one float. Well, <laughs> only because, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you that it goes along with, with my vibe. But um, I, I don't know if we'll ever get to the bottom of it, you know, and... Uh, I do have issues with the way that those buildings came down. You know the um, you know that the Empire State Building had a B twenty six Mitchell right fly into it on the eighty sixth yeah. floor. Building didn't fall down, right? No. <laughs> so uh, no, I I'm not. Uh, I was very surprised by that answer. Yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to do one of my personal picks here. Okay. Um, John Benet Ramsey. Okay. Um, now, uh, the, the, everything is here Nazi rocket technology, M Malaysia 370, right? You go across the gamut. Mm -hmm. But John Benet Ramsey, for me and my generation, what we went through in the 90s with that uh, was a very, very, very big deal. And it is still uh, just one of the great mysteries of the United States. So, oh yeah, uh, everybody thought that the parents did it. I mean, that's they. I mean, they the press wrecked their lives, and and they had everybody in the country believing it. Yeah, I went to the house. I went to the house in Boulder. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right when when all of that was going down, I was speaking in Boulder at a music store, and uh, you know, a, a little conference thing. And I went, you know, wait, 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 wait. The John. And somebody had mentioned John Benet. I was like, that's right. That's here. And the guy's like, dude, it's like right there, man. It's two blocks away or something like that. I was like, can we go over there? And he said, sure. And we did. And there it was, man. The press was outside uh, of the house. There was probably, well, it was packed. It was like the whole block, uh, 50, 100 people and, you know, press and cameras. And I was able to walk right up and look at the house. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. man. It was pretty trippy. Okay. John Benet Ramsey, what's the real story and who did you speak to? Uh, I just spoke to a, a guide. I did not speak to any of the spirits who were involved in this mystery, <clears throat> but I did ask the guides and they said they could answer my questions. I started off by asking if the parents were guilty and the answer was no. They were very definitive. The parents had nothing to do with it. I asked if the brother was involved and uh, got the same answer. And then I asked, okay, well, who did it? And the answer was the neighbor. What? That's what they said. Did the you, neighbor did it. Did you uh, go to the police? No. No. Hey, uh, I, I mean, everybody thinks I'm nuts now. I don't need the police thinking I'm crazy <laughs> also, you know? <laughs> That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So it wasn't, it wasn't mom and dad. No, it definitely wasn't. Wow. And you would and think... it wasn't a brother. Well, yeah, right. And you would think uh, that... I, I, I'll just... Anybody out there 
forget about the the Ramsey family. I mean, anybody out there, something like this happens like that on Christmas in your house, in your baby, you know, that the, the parents are, are guilty here, right? I, if it was me, I'd be in prison right now, right? It, it's just the way that it is. But uh, you're saying no, and it was the neighbor. Did, uh, did the spirit guides tell you which neighbor, back, front, left, right, which one, which house? No, no, I did not pursue it that far, but I'm in the process. I've started another book, and it's going to be Spirit Speak of Unsolved Crimes. And I'm going to get a little bit deeper into this Ramsey thing in this book. So there's, I'm going to devote a chapter to it in the book that I'm now working on. And you should call the Boulder police. I'll do it. Can I do it? <laughs> sure. Man, I'll do it. I, I cracked the case, man. I got a friend. I got a friend. He can't say his name. He says it's the neighbor. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be just between you and I, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. That's interesting. Okay. There's so much to cover here. Let's let's go with, um, uh, okay, the, the other big modern mystery here. Malaysian Flight 370. Uh, still, you know, I've, I've covered this now. I can't even believe it's been almost two years. Right. Oh yeah. That's uh. That's nuts. Okay. What happened with uh, Malaysian Flight Three Seventy? <clears throat> and again, who did you speak to? Was it spirits or somebody from the plane? No, this was. I was just speaking to the general guides on this one, also. Okay. And, and I, I, I did a couple different sessions on this. I talked to guides about it, and then I actually talked to Moo, my alien buddy, about it. Okay. <clears throat> so when I talked to the guides. I got one. I got kind of one story about it, and then when I talked to Moo, I got an, I, they pretty much. He came up with pretty much the same story I got from the guides, but then he added something to it that uh, I had a hard time believing. Okay, let's go with the first part first with uh, with the guides, and then we'll get to Moo. Okay. The first part is that it was it, it was a terrorist thing and that the pilots were in on it and that they, they took the plane, turned off all the transponders and everything, and actually took it to an island and landed it intact uh, to an island that was about 500 miles off the coast of Vietnam. Now, I know everybody's thinking that uh, Diego Garcia is five, about 500 miles off of there. Right. And I probably should have asked that question, <laughs> but I didn't. Um, the idea was that they, that they wanted to take the plane <clears throat> either to Pakistan or to one of the uh, – or uh, Afghanistan or one of those countries and try to, to utilize it as a bomb in the future. I think they probably uh, might have attempted to, to use it as a bomb on Israel or something like that, flying it undercover as a as a passenger liner. But apparently, it goes to that point. What happened? Then, yeah, what happened to uh, the plane from there? I mean, it, it seems like if it was at Diego Garcia, it probably wasn't from your description there off of yeah. Vietnam, but. It would have been seen at Diego Garcia. I think uh, they uh, that would have been too hard to hide. The yeah, fact they said it was an, an isolated island, approximately five hundred miles uh, off the coast of Vietnam. Vietnam. That was the answer where they took it initially. Okay, and then what happened after that? Uh, a pair, and here's where it really gets gets hairy. But everything he's told me so far has has come true. He said that they they would. That the, the plane would never be found. He said that they would take put that parts of it would be planted, and that pieces from the airplane would be found. And this has all taken place now from uh, exactly the way he told me. <clears throat> uh, apparently, I mean, I'm, I'm almost. I printed this is all in the book, but Moo claims that they had an interaction that the aliens interceded with the thing. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, and that they actually had some type of a of an incident where they wrecked the, where the plane was damaged, and they had to take the plane and bury it in one of the deepest parts of the ocean where it wouldn't be found. So it was taken to an island, and then it took off from there. When when it took off, 
there was an alien. The aliens became involved with it. Wow. And that there was something screwed up and that they wound up having to wreck the plane and to drop it into the ocean. All the everybody on board was killed before it was taken to the island. They took it up and decompressed it, decompressed it, and everyone on board was dead except the conspirators. So they had oxygen. They were able to continue with the flight, and everybody on the plane was already uh, deceased. Correct. Wow. And he said, he said the plane. He said the place where they were searching is absolutely nowhere near where the plane is. That it would never be found in the search. But pieces would show up that were planted intentionally. So do you think that you're uh, in, in the future, are you going to go back and try to pinpoint where the plane went down? He won't tell me I tried that. Okay. Well, of course you did. <laughs> I have to ask, though, right? Uh, that's interesting. That's yeah, very everything, interesting. Uh, so far, everything he's told me has come about. The pieces showed up, you know, just, and then he said they would never find anything with the search. And he called the search off now after several all these years, and uh, everything he's told me has happened that would happen has happened. And he said that it would never be found because it was taken. <clears throat> he his 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 words were the aliens know how to cover up their mistakes. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Okay, the next. Uh, let's move on. We've got so much to cover. This is just amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Twitter on this because I can go anywhere. Justin okay. wants to know out of the blue. It's kind of funny. He did. Do, he doesn't know it's on the list, but <laughs> where's Jimmy Hoffa? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jimmy Hoffa swims with the fishes. Yes, he does. Okay. <laughs> uh, the story. And we did not talk to Jimmy Hoffa. Now, I'm in the very beginning of, our board channeling, the guides gave us some very specific instructions. They said, never, ever ask for evil. So I'm really pretty careful about which spirits I ask. So I did not ask for Jimmy's spirit, but I did ask for the guides that knew what was going on. And he, he said that the mom gave him a choice that he could either kill himself or they would take care of his family for him. And apparently in the story that that I have in the book is that he wound up so it, coming to New York and actually jumped, went off one of the big bridges into the Hudson and was never found. Wow. Really? Uh-huh. The Hudson River off a bridge. That's, that's what they say. See, I've never, n nobody has ever quite gone there, right? No. no, that's the only place I've ever heard it. But they were emphatic about it. The Hudson River makes yeah. it. Apparently, he went off with weights, and that was the end of that program. <laughs> and 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 so did he? Did he choose New York? Did was this a volunteer? You know, did he? You know, kill himself by jumping off? Yeah, I think they chose to get him out of uh, the Detroit area, so that there was never any chance of him being found. So and they wanted him to go somewhere where they've never even searched for him. So it's not the end zone at Giant Stadium, right? <laughs> oh, I'm definitely not. No, I asked that question. <laughs> right. Into the Hudson River. With the fishes, yeah. Yeah. Do you, yeah. <laughs> Do you think that that is case closed? Do you feel pretty good about that? That's very interesting. Uh, I That one I feel pretty good about. They were, they were, they were pretty emphatic about it, and it's very believable. And... Uh, I think that I think they're pretty close on that one. Now, uh, what's interesting here for me is uh, you you have said now three or four times I, you know, I didn't speak to Hoffa directly. I spoke to the spirits. I didn't speak to them directly. I spoke to the spirits. I want you to tell me out of all of these readings where you did contact somebody directly. You know, Amelia Earhart or. Uh, Billy the Kid, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just pulling yeah. things out of the yeah. air here. But was there uh, uh, a communication where you spoke directly to one of the victims? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Butch Cassidy was a, was a very cool interview. Um, Butch Cassidy, when we started talking to him, uh, I asked him, I said, uh, do you want me to call you Butch? 
And he said, no, call me Leroy. And his name is Leroy Parker. That's right. It's his proper name. Right. So through the whole interview, I called him Leroy. Very, very intelligent person to talk to. And they, in all the writings about his crimes, he was probably one of the most intelligent of all time. He was very, very proud of the fact that he never had to kill anybody during any of his crimes. You're, you're, you're re- okay, we're going to continue. I'm just going to let you know. I just got the tweet. Uh, D.B. Cooper. Somebody somebody is channeling our conversation that we had earlier today. That's <laughs> pretty bizarre because D.B. Cooper is not on the book, and that is a future work that uh, Barry is working on. But we said that we would talk about that tonight. So uh, we'll get to D.B. Cooper in a second. Okay, so uh, what did Butch tell you? What happened? Well, Butch Cassidy, uh, he and Sundance Kid, in 1901, they robbed the Great Northern Railroad, and they got $60,000, which in today's dollars is roughly $1.7 million. And that was the straw that really broke the camel's back, and the railroad hires the Pinkertons and said, get them at all costs. Right. So he, he and Sundance go down to Argentina, and they buy this huge cattle ranch down there. Uh, unfortunately, they can't resist the urge to rob trains, and he starts robbing a couple trains down in Argentina. And because of this, they t- the Pinkertons are tipped off, and Butch gets word that the Pinkertons are actually coming down to Argentina to pick him up. So they sell the ranch, and they head north, and they've got all this money from the ranch, and they, I mean, they were quite wealthy at this point. So they actually hire members of the Bolivian army to fake their death in this little town in Bolivia. Uh, they were never killed there. And, and actually, a couple of years ago, a forensic team went down and they dug up the graves that were supposed to be Butch and uh, Sundance, and there was nobody in the graves. Well, so Cassidy actually winds up, he comes back to the United States and, uh, he was a Mormon boy, and he had a sister that lived in Utah, and he actually visits her in 1926. And the family keeps it a secret. And he dies in 1936 in the state of Washington as a businessman. Uh, never had to kill anyone. Uh, I asked him if he was ever planning on reincarnating. And he said, no, he wasn't planning on coming back. I guess he's afraid of the karma he's going to face if he does. Right. Where was he buried in Washington? I cannot answer that. I did in my notes have the town, though, but I didn't put it in the book. Okay. Well, can you disclose the town? Can I... I, I don't remember. I don't oh, okay. Remember. All right. That's a future show. Let's uh, put those yeah, notes You're out. talking to an old man here. I mean, you know, the memory <laughs> isn't what it's supposed to be. <laughs> you're not any older than I am. So let's work through this together, mm-hmm. Barry. Let's do this together. Um, okay. We've got about uh, four minutes uh, before the break. Um, uh-huh. So let's, uh, okay, let me defer before we get uh, another D.B. Cooper just came in. We'll get to D.B., okay? <laughs> we'll get to okay. D.B., everybody. Um, let's do, uh, well, okay. Uh, the secret space program is, and, and your communication with, uh, with Moo and, and your alien contacts is something that you reference here, um, uh, a little bit, but certainly with, uh, uh, some of the revelations that have been going on lately with, uh, Corey Good and, and David Wilcock and, and other researchers and, and whistleblowers, uh, Tompkins, of the secret space program and what is going on in our solar system. Uh, were you able to find out anything about that directly? Well, we've been in contact uh, with aliens since our 10th president. So it's, it's not anything new. Aliens have been here since long before human race. Uh, there are... Uh- there are places where we obviously cooperate with them and where we work with them and we do things together with them. Uh, are they on Mars? Are they on the moon? Uh, they, they were on the moon when we sent our, our people up there. Uh, they are not currently on the moon. They uh, have used Mars as a base in the past, but they are not currently on Mars. Are they in the solar system? Yes. Yes, they use they uh, some of the moons of Jupiter. Right. 
some of the moons of Saturn. Um, they come and go, and they have, I mean, they have a mothership that's the size of the United States that they, that is their base ship. And that thing is currently in position behind Saturn where we can't see it. Right, right. What about Antarctica? Yes, there's underground. uh, They do have bases in Antarctica. Uh, Are they currently in Antarctica? Oh, they they were a year ago. Okay. I'm not sure if they are now with all the activity going on. They, they they often move once there's a lot of activity around them. Obviously, they're trying to keep it a secret. So, and so it's interesting how you just said that. So they are aware of. I mean, there's a lot of activity going on down there right now, right? There's a lot of action going on in Antarctica. A are huge you, amount. Yeah. Are you suggesting that they left before, like John Kerry went down there, or Buzz Aldrin, or the Vatican? Uh, they're down there visiting for a reason. I don't know what it is, but they've obviously found something down there. Uh, are you suggesting that uh, the aliens have left Antarctica before this activity started, and that was part of the reason? Yeah, I think they probably just found the the remains of their base down there. Would be my guess. Do you have any idea who, when we're talking about ET, are we talking about the Draco? We're we talking reptilians, or Nordics, uh, the Greys. Uh, you know who was in Antarctica. Oh, and and when you talk about Mu, what what race uh, is Mu? Mu is a blue alien. Oh. Ooh, yeah, he's a blue. In life, he stood nine and a half feet tall. Interesting. Comes from a planet called Robe, R O B B E. It's on the far wing of the Milky Way. His planet's about the size of Jupiter, has two suns, eight moons. Uh, and on his planet, people live to approximately 952 of our years. How long, is, uh, how long have they been visiting Earth? Oh, since the time of the dinosaurs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, I I want to pick up with Moo when we come back, actually. I I need to take a break right here. Uh, This this is, you know, this is, it it lines up with uh, so much of uh, the research that I've done and the guests that I've had. Very interesting there, Barry. Our guest tonight, Barry Strom. Mm -hmm. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. More with Barry right after this short break. Stay with us. Listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRA Radio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carcenel, tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Oh, fall. My favorite time of year. Cooler temperatures and, well, let's be honest, layers. Lots and lots of layers. Look, I get it. We all have that favorite hoodie. Matter of fact, I've got a few favorite hoodies. You should wear yours. Enjoy it. I do, but I stay focused on my health year-round. And for me, I take Nature's Youth RSF from naturesyouth.com. Nature's Youth RSF from naturesyouth.com. I eat right, control my portion sizes, still maintain a commitment to regular fitness, and I get plenty of rest, and I take Nature's Youth RSF. It's okay to cover up your beach body for a few months, but don't just forget about it. Nature's Youth understands exactly what it means to provide top quality health products, and Nature's Youth customers not only improve their health, they know they're also providing their body with the right nourishment to maintain peak performance levels and fight the aging process. So layer up and get started today with Nature's Youth RSF. Nature'sYouth.com. Simple to use, even simpler to order. Go to Nature'sYouth.com. That's Nature'sYouth.com. I have actually been on Balance of Nature for a year now. I have MS, and I recently had an MRI. This is the first year that I've had a stable MRI, so I'm thrilled. When I have an MRI with MS, usually there are growing spots that come through, which is damage on the, on the nerves in my brain and my spinal cord, and when they're glowing, it means they're active. 
And then my last MRI, they pulled it up, and I honestly couldn't believe that it was my MRI. There was nothing glowing. And in fact, the dark spots were shrinking. They were healing. And the doctor actually said to me, I think we're in remission. I was so happy. I had no idea that that could be my reality. The new challenge will allow you to receive two months of Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies free. And we'll even ship them to you free. Call now for details. Call 1-800-2468-751 or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TALK. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Back, fade to black. I'm your Sumi Church. Our guest tonight, author Barry Strom. His book, Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. So much in this book. And and what's great, Barry is, you know, you know, he's agreed to just sit and, and talk about what's in the book. There's so much here that no matter what we cover tonight, it's only the tip of the iceberg, actually, what is in the book. I was just letting Barry know uh, during the break that I have a cough button here, right? I've lost my voice. We were at a, a conference all weekend, Barry, and I'm out talking and yapping, and I lost my voice. So Barry gets, I, I hit the cough button, but Barry, I know he can hear me hacking and coughing in the background. You're probably, he's wondering, is this going out on the air? But uh, no, Barry, I think only you can hear it. I hope it's not too loud and disgusting. So, you know, I saw your pictures on Facebook partying in Los Angeles with some of my friends out there. Oh, yeah, man. It was uh, (laughs) it was uh, an incredible run. You need to come out and hang out with us. You need to do some of these conferences. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about doing it next year. Yeah, you you I I, I, I saw you with Karen Dahlman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Karen's cool. So if you yeah. need, yeah, you need anything, you just let me know. We'll get you out here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, back to Moo. The mm-hmm. big, the the D word, right? Disclosure. Uh, uh-huh. were, were you able to ask Moo about that? I did. I did. I asked him a couple of years ago about it, um, and he said that that is so, it's covered in the treaty. And he said, but things are changing. And then I asked him about two months ago again about it. And I said, how long will it be until there's disclosure? And he said, three years. So it looks like things are happening. So wait, 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 wait. Okay. So you're saying two years ago, he said three years. So are you saying that 2017, 2018 may be when things might start to kick off? Well, three years from now, it'd be 20. 2020. Oh, that's what I was saying. Uh, I didn't yeah. know if you asked him this two years ago. You're saying that just well, well, recently. Two years ago, he told me that, that it was covered under the treaty, that it would not be any time soon. But then he said, situations are changing. Oh. And, and then I asked, I, and I went on and I asked him because, you know, the, my I did write a book called Aliens Among Us, Exploring Past and Present. And which Moo helped me with all the information in. And situations have really changed, apparently. Um, I asked him, I said, Are the, is the information that you're giving me part of the disclosure process? Because he's telling me stuff that's amazing. Of course. And, yes. And he said, yes, this is all part of the plan. That, uh, you know, his coming back and giving information is, is part of what is leading to a slow disclosure. Did he say how it was going to happen, by the way? No, no, he didn't give me details on it. But I, I'm in the process of finishing up my second alien book right now. It's ready to go to the publisher. Right. And uh, we have a lot of good, fresh information in that. 
And I am trying to get that answer before I send it in to have it printed. Now, uh, I don't know if you specifically cover Adolf Hitler here. I mean, you discuss Nazi technology, which we'll get to in a second. But have you ever tried to contact uh, Hitler to see uh, if he survived World War II? <laughs> Hitler was killed in the bunker by his own men. Oh, you're killing me, Barry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> and they got his ass in a place that you don't want to go right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. So that's it. That's it. Hitler, uh, Hitler died in the bunker. Yep. Okay. All right. Um Hey, when there are good conspiracies, I'll tell you. When there aren't, I'm oh no, that's good. I got to stop them. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, uh, okay, so when does d disclosure actually occur? Is it going to be something that we're going to know about when it happens? Uh, you mentioned slow disclosure, but when will it occur? Are you saying 2020? That's what. That, that's basically what Mu told me. They expect it somewhere around 2020. Okay. Um, and again, this isn't covered in the book, but I, I just want to know what about Egypt and the great pyramids and Giza and, and the Sphinx, uh, who built them and when and where? Well, the Egyptians didn't build them on their own. They had a lot of alien help. And what he said was when they were constructed, they actually had a crystal on the top of the pyramids. Right. And, and that they would use them for navigation of the alien ships. Say that again. They, <laughs> when they built the pyramids, right? Originally, they would install these special crystals, right, on the peak of, the, of these pyramids around the world, right? Not just in Egypt, but around the world, and that they would use that the uh, alien ships would use these crystals to coordinate their positioning. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Are we ever going to, uh, you need to do that too. That's something else. I'll give you, you know, you can go ahead and start taking notes. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll make a better deal with you. What's that? I can, I can live Skype, live channel over Skype. I'll let you get, I'll get you on Skype. Right. And we'll get the board here. Right. And I'll let you ask your own questions for a couple hours. Ding, 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 ding. That's a good answer, Barry. <laughs> because, um, I, I, you know, I need to, the, the, for the world, right? I'll be the facilitator mm -hmm. here. But we need to put Giza to bed. We need to really find out uh, exactly, you know, when and where. We know that it wasn't the Egyptians, right? That was a second-hand, <laughs> the pyramids oh, were not. a second-hand gift, right? They, mm -hmm. And that's uh, pretty much the end of it. What about uh, Nazi gold? Have you found out about that? No, no, that's not something I've, uh, I haven't asked those questions yet. Okay. All right, so uh, since we're on Mu, let's get to the Nazi rocket technology. Was Mu involved, or does he know who was? No, he knows who was, and Mu died in 1987. Okay, and so he he actually had did two different missions here to Earth while he was alive. Um, what happened in 1938? There was an alien crash in Bavaria, and there were a bunch of shapeshifters involved with the that were on the ship, and they actually worked with the Nazis and they were with them for probably nine months. And then the aliens caught on to what Hitler was trying to, was going to do. And they called the aliens back. But in that time, they actually, you know, the Nazis, you see these pictures where they were actually working on a flying saucer. And that was, they were reverse engineering and what took place in that crash. Um, they repaired the, the the vehicle the alien vehicle was not was damaged but not beyond repair so they actually repaired the vehicle and in about nine months they flew back and that was the end of the participation with the nazis but in that period of time they uncovered an incredible amount of information that's how they made the big gains in their uh in their rocketry when did you? They, yeah. When did you? Yeah. When did you uh, get this information? What What year? This would have been about three years ago. Interesting. 
Very interesting, Barry. And, you know, trust me, we have a very smart audience right now, and they're all going, okay, <laughs> that fits. Okay, mm-hmm. we're, we're all right there. Okay, let me let me let me pick something else out here, man. I'm just so fired mm-hmm. up, and then I'm gonna let you do a best of. I want you to tell me what's your favorite. Uh, let's go with uh, the Knights Templar, which it, everything falls underneath that, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. We have the Holy Grail, uh, what was going on in Jerusalem, uh, the missing Ark, and and all of that. So, what were you able to find out about the Knights Templar? Well, they were uh, they were very important people in the day. Uh, they were entrusted with uh, the the Knights Templar were entrusted with the Ark of the Covenant. And I, when I asked the guide whether the Ark was still in existence, he said yes, it was. But it is in very deep hiding, and there's no way they're going to tell, give me any clues where it was. I, de- I attempted to find out, and they just cut me off. Uh, I tried asking questions you know, from different directions, and there's no way you're going to outsmart a spirit. I, I think they were all attorneys in their past life, the way they answer some yeah, of this Yeah, absolutely, stuff. absolutely. I mean, I mean, why you? And certainly some of these uh, subjects, the most important, uh, some things need to be hidden and secret. Um, and so they just went, okay, they, they're they saying that the Ark of the Covenant is here, but it is so hidden that it's not going to be found. Did they say why? Uh, to protect it, just basically to protect it. And I asked them, I asked them what the Holy Grail was. And they told me that it was a document that was written by Jesus that described his secret teachings. And we've done many challenge sessions with popes and saints where they've actually talked about uh, the hidden gospel, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, when Constantine selected the books in 325, right. it was a political decision. So you're, the Bible that we have today, the New Testament, is just strictly based on, on political decisions. There were like 300 gospels presented and uh, what I'd like 60 were selected or less. Uh, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene was rejected because she was a woman. They rejected the teachings of Jesus because in his gospel he talked of reincarnation and he actually mentioned alien beings and extraterrestrials in his own teachings. Uh, so the, the the Bible today is just very, very different than what we thought it was. And the Holy Grail are the te- are the secret teachings of Jesus. So and, what, what yeah. were you, I feel like I cut you off. I apologize for no, that. Go ahead. So not Mary Magdalene, not the golden chalice, right, from the Last Supper, but an actual document of the secret teachings of Jesus. Does it exist? And did the Knights Templar put their hands on it? Uh, it does not exist today. It was destroyed. What did but the, the but the Ark of the Covenant does exist, which is which was the container for the Holy Grail. Sure, sure. Did uh, what did the Knights Templar end up getting out of Jerusalem and spiriting back uh, to you know Scotland or the United Kingdom? What do you mean? What did they get? I mean, you know, they were there, you know, in the tunnels, you know, looking for artifacts. Mm-hmm. Did they get anything out of Jerusalem? Uh, I'm sure they did, but it's I didn't really pursue the, you know, what they got with them. But I, you know, I, I'm sure they did because the, the the Knights Templar had had the Ark of the Covenant, and whatever they chose to do with it. Or how it was passed down through the centuries, I, I don't know. They just now, simply, uh, it's a deep, dark secret. Right, that's it. So they did, the Knights Templar did find the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Oh. Yes, they did tell me that much. Oh, okay. Now, did, <laughs> did they get anything <laughs> out of Jerusalem? Did they get that out of Jerusalem? So what you're saying is that the Knights Templar were in possession of, well, they still would be today. The Knights Templar are still around. And so they are in possession of the Ark of the Covenant. It's just hidden. 
Yes, I think that is exactly the truth. I asked the guides if the Knight Templar were given possession of the Holy Grail, and they came back and said, no, the Ark of the Covenant. So that, that was how they gave it to me. And then when I asked if it's, the Ark still exists, the answer was yes. Hmm. Okay. I, asked, I also asked if the Illuminati were in possession of the Ark. That's my next question. Exactly. I know, I'm psyche. <laughs> I mean, and the answer was no to that. Okay, so nobody's utilizing the power of the Ark today. It's, it's out correct. of the hands of the bad people. It's out of the hands of the bad people, and they want to keep it that way. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. Okay. Uh, the Illuminati, since we're there, the mm -hmm. New World Order, uh, I know that you've had to have jumped into this. And when do you uh, – are you talking to the spirits directly about the Illuminati, or is there somebody that you were able to uh, to specifically speak to? Well, I asked if certain people were members of it. Such as? I, I'm, uh, the Bushes, yes. Right. The, Clint the Clintons, yes. Um, Soros, yes. He's uh, you know one of the, the main dudes in it. Uh, it's what? amazing the, the, how many members of our government are all simply tied together into this Illuminati thing. What about the Queen? What about the Queen Mother? Oh yeah, absolutely, and unequivocally. And what Rockefellers, you know the the, the normal cast of characters that you hear they're all there Star, a lot of the and a bunch of the uh, a-listers in hollywood the stars and what about uh the russian government and putin and other world governments out there besides that you know uh, great britain uh is there a, a new world order a cabal if you will that uh, uh all the heads of state are involved in i do not think putin is in that group really so yeah. so Putin is told what to do. Yeah, no. he's not no, a shot No, no, I think he's on his own. Right. He's, I don't think he's an Illuminati. Right. Wow. That's interesting. Um, yeah, but believe it or not, the guys actually speak fairly highly of Putin. What about the Shroud of Turin? I've uh, never pursued it. Okay, put that on but the But you can list. put that on your question list. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gone back and checked into... Uh, uh, sporting events or anything like that. Have you ever jumped into that? Like, is the Super Bowl rigged? Is, uh, you know, the World Cup or anything like that? Have you ever jumped into that? I mean, for your own satisfaction? No, no, I haven't gone there. Uh, who's your favorite? Uh, do you have a football team? Not really. Oh, Not that's really. why. Okay. <laughs> I went, I follow college football. I, I have a granddaughter. I have one granddaughter at Florida State, and I have another one at University of Utah. And I follow both those teams. What have you found out about Bigfoot? Let's go there. Let's go there oh. right now. Okay. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Do I? Yeah. Um, I'm allowed to ask a question, Yes, too, you can. You, you, absolutely. <laughs> um, my position on Bigfoot is very clear. I believe that the Patterson film is real. Okay? I do. I, mm -hmm. I look at that, and I am convinced that that is real. And if Ufology had a piece of footage uh, to back up our situation, just like uh, you know Bigfoot has the Patterson film, I would believe that it's case closed. But that being said, Barry. Okay, now I, I ask him whether the Patterson film was real or not. You did. I did. And? You said it was a fake. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> you're killing me. And, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it doesn't change it doesn't change my opinion, you know, and when I look at the Patterson film, it uh it it looks real to me. It doesn't look mm. fake. But on the other side, of that is this. I didn't get to finish my thought, which is this. <laughs> that is that, dirty trick. <laughs> um, well, we haven't found a corpse. Nothing's been hit by a car. You know, when people say, well, we don't find bear corpses. You know what? But we hit deer. You know, we there, hit there's bears. There's a very, very good reason why you do not find their bodies. Why is that? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> well, first of all, Bigfoot is real. You know, I didn't think it was when I, I mean, I started off just like a joke. I says, is Bigfoot real? And the guide comes back and said, would you believe me if I said yes? And I said, well, if you say so, I'll believe it. 
So I made up a whole bunch of questions about Bigfoot, one of which was that film. And that film does happen to be fake. But there is a real Bigfoot. Now, we are surrounded by multiple dimensions. You know, we live in three, basically. And there are many dimensions uh, that are unseen to us. The Bigfoot is a type of, of it's, it's a type of um, ape-like creature. It's not as intelligent as a human being, and it fears humans. Now, they are multidimensional. These animals live in two dimensions, one of which we can see and one of which we can't. And when they see a human being, they're afraid and they drop back into that unseen dimension. And when they drop into that unseen dimension, we cannot see them. And if when, when, they, when one dies and they're together, they just simply drag it back into that dimension and the body is gone. That's why you see your footprints and then all of a sudden the footprints disappear because they move into that unseen dimension. Right. Just the same as in that dimension where there's all kinds of alien activity going on. Are you fam- are you familiar with? Uh, you're killing me. The Patterson film is fake, but Bigfoot <laughs> is real. You're uh-huh. messing. You've messed with my head and the audience, and they're like, "See, Church, I told you." So, <laughs> um, before we hit this next break, are you familiar with Gobekli Tepe? No. Okay. Then we'll do that on the next list. Gobekli Tepe is a megalithic structure that was just found on the border. Uh, uh, between uh, Turkey and Syria. It's in Turkey proper. Um, But it wasn't supposed to exist. In that, it is a massive complex, and it's massive. These big, just beautiful carvings and and, and things. It's gorgeous. Um, But it's uh, 10,000 to 12,000 years old. 7,000 years older than uh, the Great Pyramids. So, yes. And uh, so, but what we don't know about Gobekli Tepe um, is what it is, who built it, what, it, you know, is it religious? Is it uh, astrological? Uh, we, we just don't know. But it is an incredible complex. So when we do our little thing, uh, I'll mm-hmm. put that on my list. And it's something that uh, the world needs to know. It's it's. It's the it's the great mystery out there. It wasn't supposed to exist, Barry. It just mm-hmm. simply wasn't supposed to exist. You know, civil- oh, there's a lot of stuff isn't supposed to exist. It's out there. The Nazca lines are incredible when you when you know what those are. Right, right. Well, what did you find out about Nazca? Uh, well, it was it's they were built by aliens, obviously, because if the, <laughs> the, there's no way the locals could have locals helped out. Um, are you familiar with the shape of the with the spider shape in the Nazca lines? Yes. Are you? Uh, I want everybody to hang on to your seatbelt because that is the shape of the aliens that helped them build the lines. Really? Yes, the spider people. And what about they, they stood six foot tall? I, that's interesting. Well, and there's also the alien dude that's on the side of the mountain, right? That's waving. That was that was put there. The aliens were demonstrating their laser cannon, and they they show, they wanted to show the locals their power, and they used their laser guns, and they formed out on the side of the mountain. So, what about uh, when they were done? Any indication on that? I'm sorry. Uh, the Nazca lines. You know, what year? How old are they? Oh. Okay, fair enough. Uh, fair enough. I get that. Um, yeah, I missed that. I, I don't. I don't remember that. One. Well, and also in Nazca, that they, was two books ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, they also lopped off that one mountain, right? The pulp of flat mountain. Yeah. And w- where did the dirt go? Why did they do it? They took it in their vehicles and dumped it in the ocean. Oh man, you are a pillar of knowledge, Barry. <laughs> That's incredible. Have you ever talked to uh, Eric Von Daniken about this? No, no. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, we're going to open up the phone lines, everybody. We're going to head to a break here in about four minutes, and then uh, we'll open up the phone lines. Uh, A couple of, uh, so just get ready for that. Uh, There's three things that I I kind of want to get out of the way. We'll see if we can do these rapid fire, but we can also do it after the break. 
but uh, 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 Princess Diana. Yeah, killed by the royal family. Killed by the royal family. Rapid fire. Sandy Hook. False flag, or did it go down? Was it just? Uh, was it false just? False flag. It was a false flag. Okay, to what degree? I mean, were the were the kids actually were the children actually murdered or yes, or not? Yes. No, they were murdered. They were murdered. Yes. Um and why was why was it a false flag? What was why what's the intention? The anti-gun people. Really? So yep. it, that simple. And well, okay, were you able to find out why it didn't work? I mean, we still have uh, I, guns. I, I have a fair amount of information on that. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. We have uh, we have three minutes. Uh, I was just I'm I'm paging through, so I want to make sure I get the stuff right on this. Okay. Uh, it was definitely the anti-gun people that did it. Uh, yeah. When I asked the. Uh, I asked if it was a government conspiracy, and they said, sadly, yes. I said, are you saying it's planned by our government? The answer was part of the New World Gun Control Campaign. Uh, I asked if Adam Lanza was killed on the day before the massacre. It was not really the shooter. And when I asked if Adam was killed the day before, he said there were two. And I asked two perpetrators, and they said, yes, the mother was also killed prior. Was it a setup? And the answer was the father was involved in government programs. Was the dad paid to set up his son and mother? And the the purpose was silencing. Wow. And that's pretty much what they told me about it. <laughs> when you when you ask the spirits of, about this. <clears throat> I mean, because Sandy Hook, uh, the tragedy of, of you know, small children being, you know, executed like this uh, for whatever reason, right? Um, whether it was Adam Lanza, that's tragic, but the children still die. Or if it was a false flag, is it as tragic? No, the children still died, right? Mm -hmm. But right. are you able to ask the spirit guides, again, we have 60 seconds, uh, why the government and, and why these uh, gun control people have a lack of morals, you know, where children now are losing their lives because of their lack of morality. Because the Second Amendment is the key to maintaining uh, our freedoms. As soon as, as soon as we lose our guns, there's, and we've been told many times that there's nothing stopping the New World Order people uh, from basically doing what they want to do with us fascinating fascinating yep and you know it's our own warning you know for us to just stand up and keep our eyes open and that's the whole point of all of this you know not necessarily revolution in the streets but that we acknowledge and we know what's really going on our guest tonight barry strom i'm your host jimmy church this is fade to black we'll be right back hi everybody this is rob halford the metal god on jimmychurchradio.com KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. PatriotPrepared.com carries the leading brands of storable food from Numana, Legacy, and Heaven's Harvest. Patriot Prepared. Our name says it all. We're dedicated to empowering you to be self-reliant and confident in any circumstance. Whether you want to be prepared in the event of an emergency or you're an outdoor sports enthusiast, PatriotPrepared.com has prepackaged meals and kits for your entire family. Legacy, Heaven's Harvest, and Numana are known for high-quality, great-tasting GM free nutritious food with no chemical preservatives simple to prepare easy to store gluten-free and organic high quality nutrition options with a 25 year shelf life you can't beat the feeling of being food secure when you need it most so go to patriotprepared.com right now to pick up your supply of high quality storable food for your family because it makes good sense to be prepared that's patriotprepared.com 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Would you like relief from muscle pain, headaches, and discomfort to sleep better, have more energy during the day, and just feel naturally amazing? Fibromalic can help. Its blend of malic acid and magnesium can provide pain relief and comfort for those who experience fibromyalgia. It helps your body absorb more oxygen, and it works quickly for a significant reduction in pain within 48 hours, all without a prescription. Ask for Fibromalic at health and vitamin shops or shop Fibromalic.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. secret i love ponies i really love ponies i'm serious i couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush why fade to black because you never got that pony damn it this is fade to black with jimmy church on the game changer radio network and kgra the global radio alliance All right, welcome back to Fade to Black. I'm opening up the phone lines right now. 323-825-5045. Our guest tonight, Barry Strom. His book is Spirits Speak, Conspiracies. uh, uh, They speak of conspiracies and mysteries. And, you know, this is what's great about this, uh, Barry. You can thumb through the book. And it is just page after page, the disappearance of the Cyclops, the Alaskan Triangle, the Dragon's Triangle, I, I just uh, uh, Vortex Activity. Uh, you've got uh, Colonel Custer. Um, oh, he's one of my favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Spirit of General Custer, the Son of Morning Star, uh, the Campaign of 1876, uh, just on and on, It's just page after page. Of of stuff here, the 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 back cover and the list. Like I said, there's about thirty forty subjects here, but the book itself is comprehensive. It is just page after page after page. You've got Richard the Third. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Uh, everybody's one of your favorites, Barry. Yeah, yeah he's he was really cool. Whether, he actually he actually appeared to me, and I saw him. The California drought, harp, weather manipulation. Uh, man-made disasters, tsunamis, chemtrails. It's just page after page after page. Oh, you've got, uh, that's right, the Tinseltown tragedy, Robert Walker. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, I mean, who would have thought? Um, okay. I mean, it's just, it's just page <laughs> after page after page after page after page. Okay, everybody get the book. Uh, let's uh, let's go to the phones really quick. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Barry Strom. Who's calling? Hi, Barry. Uh, wait, I mispronounced his name. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I had a question. Um, does do you know anything about like the Anunnaki or any of that, like N- the Nibiru planet? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Nibiru. Fair enough. Nibiru. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's your name? Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Okay, let's see if we can get some Anunnaki and Nibiru information out of the spirits. What do we have there, Barry? Okay, well, Nibiru does exist. It's out there. Um, There's also a ninth planet that also exists. 
except it's not a real planet. Um, it's huge, and it's actually a portion of a burned-out sun that lays out beyond Pluto. And that's what, you know, if you look at the mathematics of the solar system and how the different <clears throat> rotations uh, work with different planets, it indicates that there's another large planet out there, and there is indeed. Uh, the Anarchy is, uh, they did exist, and they were aliens, but they did not come from Nibiru. There you go, Marilyn. Thank you so much awesome. for the phone call. You. Yeah, you got it. Not a problem. Let's uh, just keep going here. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Barry Strom. Hi, Barry Strom. Uh, Jimmy, hi there. thanks for taking my call. This is Ken from Irvine. Um, what I'm wondering is, um, with all of the communication that, that you're capable of, how much communication do you think you might be receiving from the New World Order people? I mean, if you can do it, chances are they got a handle on it, too. <laughs> Great question, Ken. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think about that, Ben? Do you think uh, they can use you for disinfo, too, as well? Uh, they probably can, but they, you know, there's so many people writing about this out there. Uh, the Internet has opened up a lot of this stuff, and I think most people just think I'm crazy. So, you know, I, I was told by uh, Moo quite all, early when we started this, that they're either going to think that I'm a nut job or a prophet. And I think the vast majority think I'm a nut job. And I'm just kind of hiding behind that cover. Right. There's no gray area there, <laughs> is there, Barry? Yeah. No, right. none whatsoever, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Barry Strong. Hi, Barry Strong. Hi there. Um, I'm curious as the, sorry, um, I'm curious about the FEMA camp. And this is Tammy. Mm -hmm. Okay, FEMA camps. So you want to know if the FEMA camps are real. Have you been able to find out about uh, anything about the FEMA camps? Always one of the big popular culture uh, uh, myths. You know, it's almost legend. Uh, are they real? Well, there are FEMA camps, but I don't think we're told that they're not for the purpose of the, the conspiratorial purposes. I mean, FEMA does have camps around the country for emergencies. Uh, some of them may be larger than you would uh, want them to be, but we're not told that there's any great governmental thing or takeover that's about to take place. Right. So we're not going to be locked up in FEMA camps. No. Okay. No, I think we're safe on that. All right, man. I feel better. I can get some sleep tonight. Yeah. Let's get go, a good rest. Let's go over to Australia and Lynn. Lynn, welcome to Fade to Black. Say hi to Barry. Hello, Barry. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? I'm doing good, Lynn. We're great, Lynn. Um, Barry, I was wondering if you know anything about Antarctica, what's down there? Uh, well, the, the Nazis had a camp there doing W-2, and they actually worked with the aliens down in, in Antarctica and did uh, test some very elementary nu nuclear weapons down there. Uh, the, after the war, the Nazis were obviously expelled, and the aliens did continue with their camp in our Antarctica. Now, with everything going on, I'm really not sure that they're still there. If, if they are still there, they're probably deep underground. Uh, they also have bases that entrances come in deep under the water. Uh, I haven't really checked real closely with them for the last year or so. So my guess is that they've pretty much bailed out of the camp down there. That's interesting. And, and, and Lynn, thank you for the question. Do you have anything else for Barry? Only because you're, you're in Australia, Lynn, you get a second question. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, <laughs> yes, I just thought there might have been, um, if there was a reason why everyone's going down there in the last couple of months, that's all. Um, and if he's got anything to, any, um, anything about 9-11, yeah, I think Lynn came into the show a little late. We opened the mm, show with 9-11 tonight, Lynn. Oh, sorry. That's yeah, okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we I'll get back into 9-11 just for you. How's that? Yeah, oh, nobody right. liked my answer on that. Yeah, nobody liked Barry's answer. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much, Lynn, and be yeah. safe out there. Okay, thanks, guys. All the best. Oh. Um uh, what were we? Oh, oh, back to Antarctica. Yeah. So we we just got back from the Conscious Life Expo, and I'm I'm just I'm gonna say this: 
All I have to do, you know, I've got a thousand people in front of me, right? Five hundred big rooms full of people. And uh-huh. all I have to do is say Antarctica and it erupts like I'm Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Right? That's what everybody wants to know. And we all know there's something going on down there. And and it's covered in ice. Could it be? I, I'm serious. It's the subject right now, right? Do you, it, Were you able to find out anything about Atlantis? Is Atlantis Antarctica? You know, 60 million years ago, 10 million years ago, did it move? Is is no. okay? No, I know where I know where Antarctica is. Okay, it's there. well, I knew that you did, Barry. <laughs> it's it's in the it's in the rough vicinity of Bermuda. It really is. Uh huh. Okay, that would make sense. So, um, what other information uh, do you have on Antarctica? When, where, uh, where did uh, they go? Uh, Atlantis or Antarctica? Uh, Atlantis. Okay. Uh, Atlantis at its prime had about a million people. They were very, very advanced, and they had a type of energy that we're not familiar with. And they actually had an accident that destroyed the population. And then through the years, movement of the plates and earthquakes and so forth uh, lowered the t- the town underneath the water. So it's, it's still down there, and it's in the vicinity of... Uh, of Bermuda, and it's actually in the outer edges of the Bermuda Triangle. What about, uh, uh, I've I've got so many different, what about (laughs) the crew of not only the Mary Celeste, but, you know, and and thumbing through the book, you have the Cyclops there too as well, which are Mm -hmm. two of the great maritime mysteries. Um, that also could be involved with the Bermuda Triangle. So let's yes. let's let's kind of go there for a second. Uh, let's go with the crew of the Mary Celeste. What's up with that? Okay, the Mary Celeste was an abduction gone bad. Apparently, the aliens. The, apparently, the aliens wanted to wanted to study um, celestial navigation, and they abducted them and something happened then it wound up that, that all of them died and that while after they died once again the aliens had to cover their problems and vaporize the bodies uh, keeping in mind that the rules for abductions were much different back in those days than they are now right now the abductions are very closely monitored the Mary Celeste. They're, they're not allowed to kill people anymore. <laughs> uh, just for the audience, in case you don't know, the Mary Celeste is, uh, was a ghost ship um, that was found and the crew was gone. And apparently, food on the table, right? Tea in the cups. Yeah. It was typical abduction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what about the Cyclops? Uh, Cyclops got caught into a little bit of the Bermuda Triangle stuff. Um, Intersection of ley lines can create, uh, actually it can create wormholes and energy vortexes. And apparently the Cyclops got caught in an energy vortex and sunk. Was it uh, sunk? I think. Oh, I get mixed up on some of these things. Okay, no, that's all right. That's all right. You you get to that, and I'll bang a phone call right now. Hi, you're live on Fade okay. to Black. Say hi to Barry Strom. Hi, Barry Strom. Um, hi there. Uh, yeah, I had just started recent uh, recently listening to uh, Jimmy after he- uh, hearing about him on uh, Coast to Coast. I lo- uh not a long time coast coast uh listener but very much a truther realizing that everything we've been taught is a facade and i have just recently um looked into gematria a little bit and i'm seeing some pretty crazy things like fema concentration camps coming up under my full name and uh, yeah, let me click on this page here uh, where I have it. Um, Patriots ready. Um, also, 
Indian moon karma, which I have a question for. Okay, well, I, I just okay, fair enough, fair enough. What is your question for Barry? Uh, what does Indian moon karma mean? And um, uh, you, uh, I, I just uh, indig- uh, indigenous moon gifts uh, and indi- and Indian moon karma. Uh, and why, uh, and it says Patriots, uh, Ready, Source Code, uh, okay. Catch a Falling Star. You know, I, I just, I need some clarity on why my name is bringing up these. Okay, fair okay. enough. And what? And what's your first name? Charles. Thank you, Charles, for the phone call. So, uh, Barry, Indian Moon Karma? Uh, never heard of it. Okay, Giamatra. Sorry. Okay. All right. If you don't know, you don't know. No, I, it's. Uh, I mean, we've we channeled this stuff over four hundred hours, but the more I do, the more I find out just how much I haven't done. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hi. Good evening, Barry, Jimmy. This is Maria from San Jose. And I had a question since I'm up here in, um, in the north of California. We've had a lot of rain. And I know you had mentioned something about a drought and understanding what was happening with the California drought. And all of a sudden, we have water and we have lots of it. Yes, you do. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, Barry, I'm, I'm handing that straight off to you. We were going to get to this probably at some point tonight anyway. So what's going on, man? It uh, it certainly seems fixed all of a sudden, doesn't it? Well, there's no question that we're perfectly capable of manipulating the weather. I mean, that's just simply the way it is. Uh, we've been doing it since World War II. Uh, the whole harp facility affecting the ionosphere. Uh, you can, I mean, there are patents in the U.S. Patent Office explaining how all this works and how they really can manipulate the weather. Right. What I couldn't figure out was why they allowed California to be in drought for so long. Right. And then all of a sudden, they come out of this drought and they come out with these hellacious storms. Uh, It's definitely going to be a subject of future conversation in my channeling, but uh, I, I cannot tell you the motives behind it. I can tell you that they would be capable of not doing it. Well, and then this is the other thing, and um, and what was your name, Maria? It's Maria. Okay, yes. thank you for the phone call, Maria. And thank I, you. You have a good evening. You too. I I totally agree with you. There's not uh, there's not really a good reason to do this unless if you take it down and peel back a little bit more, which is the manipulation of uh, the 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 food supply. Right. And commodities and and profits for these large companies. Right. And you go because the Central Valley of California feeds the United States. And, you know, I say this all the time. People don't get it. If you're in Minnesota in January and you're getting fresh strawberries, what do you think is going on? Right. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You know, that comes from here. And so, uh, you know, to manipulate the food chain uh, could be part of it. You know, I, I I don't know, but I'm trying to look for answers here, too. Why starve out the country unless you're just doing it just enough to make things more expensive and your profit margins go up, you know, because Monsanto is controlling all angles of it. Right. They're controlling the seeds. They're controlling the skies, and they have the GMOs, and everything else is in play here. And if they control every side of it, doesn't that make sense, right? Well, there's so much that's controlled in our in our whole environment right now. I mean, we've got so little control over things. If if people actually understood how little control we have, it would uh, make them all sick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, let's stay on the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Barry Strong. Hey there, Jimmy. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. Who's calling? Okay, this is Captain. How are you? Hi, Captain. What do you have for Barry tonight? Hey, Barry, listen. Uh, I know earlier a lady called in, and she was asking about 
please give me the initial of uh, who did 9-11. Just the initials. Do what? I'm sorry. I didn't he, he said the initials of who was behind 9-11. I think, Captain, I think Barry was very clear about that. It, it went yeah, down the uh, way ben it went Laden down. Bin Laden was behind 9-11. Yeah, Bin Laden. Now, that's, he wasn't the only one, but he was the main one. Bin Laden was behind Now, Are you sure? That's what Barry says. That's what they tell me. I don't think so, Barry. I think you need to go back to your research really good. <laughs> it's the spirits that are communicating with uh, with Barry. It's not about research. I think, Barry, I think Barry don't want to say who really did it. Because, uh, <laughs> I, I think I've said quite a bit tonight. That's <laughs> <laughs> hey, Captain. The, uh, hey, 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 Captain. Captain, I, Captain I, let I, me I, jump. Let me. Let, let me. Donald Trump. Okay. Donald Trump. What is his status and what's going to happen to him? To who? To Donald Trump. What is his status and what's going to happen to him? I'll tell you exactly what the guides told us. Okay. They, t they tell us that he has good intentions. And they tell us that I asked for a message for my newsletter a couple of weeks ago. And the message was to trust your team in Washington. Wow. That's, that's okay. That's going to be tough to do. I don't, well, <laughs> I didn't say it was easy. Yeah. Once again, I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Captain, thank you for the phone call, my friend. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, all the best. Yeah, everybody wants to know about Donald Trump. Okay, let me uh, defer over here to Twitter really quick and get some of these questions in before I let you go, Barry. I want to get them all in. Okay. Uh, who killed, uh, you know, Kim Jong-un's brother was killed today in Malaysia. Did you hear about this? Yeah, I heard about it, yeah. Yeah. But I obviously have not had a chance to figure anything out about yeah, that. It's breaking news. You're doing the show tonight. You need to yeah, get know, to your connections. <laughs> All right. Uh, what happened in Roswell in 1947? An alien ship with five alien, aliens on it crashed. No kidding. So it was five. The number is five. How many survived? The number is five. How many survived? None. None. None survived. What uh, did they take everything to Wright Patterson? Fifty one. They took it to Area Fifty One. It didn't mm -hmm. go to Wright. That's where Pat they wound up. Wow, interesting. Um, uh, I have a whole chapter on Roswell in my Alien book. Okay, well, let's stay on that a little bit. Um, uh, what were they gray? Were they were the grays? No, 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 no. They weren't grays. They're probably. More like little whites. They're only about three, four feet tall. Right. Okay. So they weren't the grays. Uh, little, little, little whites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and what were we able to find out? Uh, where, where did the uh, ship come from? Do we know that? Well, we did a lot of reverse engineering off of that ship. And uh, I mean, what star system do we know? What planet? Hmm. No, I okay. didn't ask specifically what system. I did ask what which ones, and they, they were little whites. Okay, okay. Um, and what were we able to get from, I mean, was it anti-gravity? Was it uh, transistors, uh, optical cabling? Or, you optical know. cable was, was probably the biggest thing that came out of it. But we also learned materials, lightweight materials. Right. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, let's see here. What about the uh, the uh, space shuttle disasters like uh, uh, Columbia? Uh, have not investigated Columbia. Okay. Oh man. Okay. I've only got so much more time here. Uh, let me uh, put that on your list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. 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 Man. Somebody just shoot me for being so stupid. Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart flew into one of the energy vortexes, screwed up her navigation equipment. She ran out of gas or ran out of fuel and crashed into the ocean. Did she, did she survive? No. Oh, man. Okay. Now, <laughs> okay, so that's it. That's it. That's what happened. Vortex. <laughs> Um, messed up uh, her her compass and her reading. She didn't know, we, and she just crashed, and that's the end of it. Yep, she ran out of fuel. 
Now, um, Mike Barrett just said, see, Jimmy, I'm right. I'm just winning everywhere here tonight. <laughs> I think you guys are yeah you guys are in connections here. Um, I, I'm sure that you're aware of uh, the the Malibu deep underwater base discovery that we did uh, three three years ago, maybe a little longer here in Southern California, and we broke that no- news here on this show. Now I just went out there with a boat and dropped cameras in the water. What have have you been able to find out anything about the uh, the Malibu underwater base? Just that it exists. And they told us that that was one of the locations of an underwater base. Right. Okay. Um, any any other information about it? No. Okay. No, I didn't pursue it. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, there there's more coming from us about this uh, very soon. Here, I've got a new TV show, you know, and and some <laughs> stuff that's coming up. Um, now, what uh, what uh, you know the uh, this is for me before I let you go. You know the Voynich manuscript, the book. No, I'm not familiar. Okay, with it. see, that's another thing that we've got to find out. The Voynich manuscript is a uh, 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 a single book. That is written in a language that has not been deciphered yet. And the book comes from, it's been dated between uh, 1400 and, and 1600, 15th century kind of situation. They're guessing. Uh, that's the best that they can do. But the language itself and the text has not been deciphered. Um, it's got drawings in it. It's a, it's a very complex book. I think it's in the Yale Library now today. Um, very, very researched, and it has stumped everybody. You know, we cracked Enigma, right? <laughs> We've cracked mm-hmm. everything. We cannot crack the Voynich manuscript. Okay, um, we've got one minute left. We didn't get into D.B. Cooper. We have a choice here. You can either do a little bit of overtime and hang on for another 10 minutes, and uh, we'll uh, do D.B. Cooper when we come back. Are you cool with that? No, sure. Yeah, All right. I can stick with it. So why don't why don't we do uh, why don't we do just that? I'm going to take a break um, and thank you for all the phone calls, everybody. I'm going to close the phone lines down. Um, so if you're on hold, tough. I, I'm going <laughs> to. This is this is now me. Um, why why hasn't we're going to discuss this when we come back? But why hasn't DB Cooper in in a general sense? Why hasn't it left popular culture? You know, we are fascinated with DB Cooper. Did you go and pursue DB, or did DB come to you? I pursued DB. Why hasn't it left popular culture? Why can't we seem to let this go? It's the only. It's the only. Uh kidnapping of an airplane that it has never been solved right Unbe- the only one yeah unbelievable it's uh, would you call it the perfect crime uh until he left the airplane yeah okay there you go all right okay let's stop right there <laughs> Stop right there. Our guest tonight, Barry Strom, his book, Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. You can follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Email is Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. We're going to do a little overtime and D.B. Cooper when we come back. Stay with us. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. I had gout in both my knees, and it's gone. Uh, well, I'm pretty stupid. I should have ordered it, like, you know, 15 years ago. Best really? thing I ever got in my... It's, it's the most effective product that I've ever bought in my life. He had eczema on his hand, and it cracked and it cracked for years. Mm-hmm. He did anything from doctor, every cream, everything. And three months on the veggies and fruit, mm-hmm. it was gone. They're just awesome. They keep asking me, what am I doing? I told them what I did with my cholesterol. I had the blood test, right? And it went down 100 points. 262, now it's 162. Everything is just perfect. 
Call now to find out how to get your free month supply of Balance of Nature. Call 800-2468-751. That's 800-2468-751. Call now, 800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TSL. Would odors, mold, and mildew describe your basement or crawl space? It doesn't have to be that way. Transform them into a fresh, healthy, usable one with the technologically advanced Wave Moisture Control Units. The computerized operation maximizes moisture control and also expels harmful radon, combustion gases, and numerous other pollutants. Dehumidifiers are old technology that do nothing for air quality and waste energy. Wave units are intelligent, self-monitoring, do not need maintenance, and will save you hundreds in electricity. Wave units are still running effectively effectively over 15 years. They've been tested and installed in public and military housing and by property managers nationwide. Buy a unit now and if your home is not fresher and drier, you can return it for a full refund for up to 12 months. What have you got to lose? Call now. 1-888-618-WAVE. 1-888-618-WAVE. Or visit mydryhome.com. That's mydryhome.com. Wave Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. What's up, Fade or Nots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boom boxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks and use the promo code JCRTWS and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple, just go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner, go back Lee Tepe. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right, welcome back, Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Barry Strom. I've shut down the phones, everybody, because I'm going to keep Barry to myself now. Going to get some stuff out of the way. Thank you, Barry, for doing a little overtime with us. Very cool. I know it's late uh, where you are. But uh, a couple of things. Number one, uh, Do Sky. You've answered, uh, Do Sky uh, just asked me in Twitter. You've answered uh, the the two big questions for mankind. Are we alone in the universe? And what happens when we die? What's on the other side, Barry? Oh, it's very cool on the other side. <clears throat> when, when we talk to the spirits about, they are all very happy over there. Uh, we're nothing but a soul energy. And when you talk to the spirits, they'll tell you that death is the beginning of another cycle. To us, death is the end, but you, your soul simply passes. You, your loved ones are there to help you over. Um, you become adapted to the other side, and your soul energy, you can do basically whatever you want. Uh, there are seven levels. There are seven realms on the other side. You definitely don't want to be in the lower realm. It's an area of nothingness. There, There's no hell like uh, fire and brimstone and this guy in a little red suit. He doesn't exist. But there is a place where they put the bad people. For instance, uh, the Hitlers are put in places like that. Uh, the, the role of your soul on Earth is to learn so that it can advance in its levels on the other side. And you make the decision when you have free will, when your soul's on the other side, like you do on this side. And if you decide that you do not want to reincarnate, then you don't have to do it. Uh, if on I am 
I can historically prove my prior lifetimes. Uh, the last two, I have actually have a page up on my on Spirits Predict that historically proves my last lifetime. Uh, I was a Native American in my last trip around and, uh, in the 1870s. Uh, I was also a Confederate soldier, and I can prove all that. Reincarnation is absolute. Uh, took place, your soul was your soul energy was here long before the human race was on this earth. Uh, your soul has been on other planets. Uh, Mu has the same has same soul that we have, and that's why I can channel with him. You'll find that aliens in our galaxy go to the same heavens that we do, uh, can interact, and you can actually make a choice if you want to come back and reincarnate on another planet. Oh, it's really? Yes. Now, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Have you had contact with a frustrated spirit, you know, somebody that... Maybe was upset, upset that they died. Maybe they liked Earth, <laughs> their life, and and so have you, have you encountered that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Davy Jones of the Monkeys, he died very rapidly, and he was very very upset that he had passed like that. Uh, you and when you want to reincarnate, you have to make up a life plan. Your guides go through the plan, and it's a long process. Sometimes when the soul is very, very upset, they'll let you come back right away so, you so, that, you, so that you can readjust over here on this side. That's incredible. And so you talked to Davey directly, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Did, did you ask him about Marsha Brady? Did they ever have a little little thing? I did not ask that one. Oh, man. Put that now, one I did on. ask Jack about Marilyn. Oh, that I was going to ask you that earlier. <laughs> okay. I want to get to D.B. Cooper, but that can we can okay. put that on hold here. <laughs> Jack and Marilyn. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go. Let's go. What what did he say? Well, they definitely did have an affair. You know, there's no question that they had an affair. Um, he didn't want to. I, I did not ask him how she died. However, I am about to go back and, and readdress this because I want to put a chapter on the death of Marilyn Monroe in my next book. Right. So I don't have the information on how she passed. But they definitely were lovers, and, and he freely admits it. What about uh, Robert? Was she two-timing? Yes, absolutely. Oh, man, you're killing me, Barry. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, man. Uh, what about Joey Bishop? Was there ever, anything there? Uh, I didn't ask that. Have you talked to Marilyn or only to Jack? Only to Jack. Have you tried to reach out to Marilyn? No. I'm intending to do that though. And how do you how do you go about that? I mean to you know to make a direct contact, you know, Davy Jones or, you know, Jack Kennedy. Uh how do you do that? Do you actually say it by name? Uh, what's the process there? Well, the process starts a couple nights before you're going to do it. You 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 pray for the president presence of the spirit that you want. You ask your guide if they can prepare that spirit to come forward and discuss with you. And then you sit down and you write the questions out that you're going to ask. And they will actually know the questions ahead of time. And uh, when you come on, we, we'll start with our own master guide. Uh, we'll ask for the spirit. And if the spirit is not available, they'll tell us it's not available. Uh, sometimes they've already reincarnated and come back and, and we can't talk to them. But they will they will be familiar and they can go into that as the spirit's back, they can go into that spirit's book of life, which you carry with you in your head, and they can answer the questions just the same as you were talking to this to the spirit itself. Is is there ever a zone you don't go into? Uh evil. Never touch evil. Right, right. Okay, cool. Now what about the now again, this is me asking these questions what about the rock stars do you ever reach out to like uh janice or or jimmy hendrix or or jim morrison uh kurt cobain maybe or have you ever done that no not yet okay. but i have my i have my new book outline and we're going to do cobain and a bunch of the rock stars in that uh 
Tupac, whatever his name is, and yeah, you know, t- Tupac works. <laughs> you can say yeah. that. Um, and, I, you know, I'm a, I'm an old fart. I don't know all this stuff. Yeah, well, rock stuff. Well, you know, the two that I want to talk to would be uh, Randy Rhodes, who you probably don't know, but he was the guitar player for Ozzy Osbourne that tragically died in a plane crash. Uh, mm-hmm. Very young in his early twenties. Very sad. Um, and uh, Dimebag Daryl, uh, who you probably don't know either, but uh, who was tragically shot to death on stage uh, during a performance. And uh, it would be really cool for me uh, to reach out to those guys and to all of their fans that, uh, you know, because both of their careers, you know, tragically cut short and were both guitar players, too, as well. Game changing guitar players. So now I have talked to, to Buddy Holly. Oh, okay. And, uh, well, you know what? Let's save that for another show. Uh, You know, what we should do, you know, that'd be really cool is we can have our little, you know, moment together and we'll do that. Mm -hmm. And I'll, and let's do a music show. Let's do a show with music. Okay. Yeah. We can try it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should. Well, I mean, buddy Holly's on the list, right? So, and you've already made contact there. And there's so many others, too, as well. Bobby Darren, right? So, um, anyway, D.B. Cooper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, with uh, did you contact D.B.? I mean, is he still alive? Let's start oh, there. Oh, no. Okay. No. So, did no. you contact D.B. or a spirit guide? No, we talked to these guides. Okay. All right. But the guy, believe it or not, they can look back and actually see the event take place. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. So when I asked him what happened to the money, the answer was, I am seeing it being scattered. So when he jumps out of the plane, the bag breaks. Right. And the money goes. Uh, he apparently jumped. The with the spot that he jumped is a, apparently was far away from where they searched for him. Uh, I think they messed up the location because when he hits the ground, uh, he injures himself. And he actually dies about a week later from internal bleeding. So he survived the jump, but he didn't he, sur- he didn't have the money with him. No, no. It kind of scattered. And I think that's how I think they actually found the the packs that were found buried. They were found and buried. But it wasn't by Cooper. I think that was part of the scattered money that just remained intact in bundles. Interesting. Uh, where did he? Uh, so he survived for about a week. Um, where did you know? Did he make it anywhere? Did, did he make contact with anybody, or did he? I have. To, I, I'm in the process of writing this chapter for the new book, and I have. I got about ten follow up questions. Uh, like I need to know whether anybody helped him. Uh, some other details. Sure, but, sure. W- but what they told me was <clears throat> that they that uh, his body was actually the remains of his body was actually found about twenty years later, but nobody realized at the time that it was Cooper's remains. And I need to get more information on that and do more research on it. I can't wait for this book to come out and uh, the DB Cooper mystery. Interesting. So he survived. Cash didn't, and he 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 lived for about another week, and that's what you've got right now. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, I've got I've got most of it, but I I have about ten follow ups that I gotta gotta clear up before I can finish the chapter and and have everything clarified. Barry, thank you so much for this conversation tonight. It was absolutely <laughs> wonderful, and and thank you for taking the phone calls and and everything else. Absolutely fascinating conversation. And uh, I absolutely enjoyed it. And your book is uh, available on Amazon. Your websites are spiritspredict.com, messagesofheaven.com, ghostofgoldenlane.com. How can everybody contact you if they want to talk to you specifically? How do they do that? Well, the best bet is to come in through the website. Um, I, I, my email address is there. You can, you can send me an email with information and ask your questions. Uh, uh, come to me on Facebook. You can follow me on Facebook or send a friend request. Uh, I'm not too hard to find. I have a newsletter that people can s- subscribe to for free. When we get uh, fresh channeling information, we usually put it out in a newsletter and let people know what's going on. 
Uh, you know, my books are at Barnes and Noble, Amazon. You can buy signed copies off of my off of Spirits Predict. Uh, that's my main site, and there's a lot of pages to work with. I have one page of angel photography. I have a page of pictures of real fairies that I've taken. I did a lot of photography for my first book uh, on the Battle of Gettysburg. And I have a lot of the results up. I have a whole page of apparitions so you can go in and see actual ghosts. Um, it's an interesting website. And, and the book is incredible. All of the books are, but Spirit Speak has absolutely floored me. And I, you know, I'll throw you under the table right now, Barry. It's the first thing out of my mouth today when you and I were talking before the show. This thing blows my mind. And I would su heavily suggest it to everybody. It's an excellent book. And Barry, thank you so much. And thank you from all of our audience tonight. Uh, what an amazing conversation. Thank you so much. Be safe out there. Let us know when uh, D.B. Cooper is done. And then we'll do the I'll music do thing. And then we'll bring it back and we'll have some more fun. Okay, anytime. Thank you so much, Barry. Mm -hmm, thank you. Be safe out there. Barry Strom, everybody. I'm going to take a quick break right here, and I'm going to come back, and I will do all of the news that you know nothing about. Well, I'll squeeze in as much as I can. Barry Strom, the book, Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries, available on Amazon, signed copies at his website, and, of course, at Barnes & Noble. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. I'll be right back. Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black... You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights. Just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Teppy. Hi, folks. In a world of GMO, genetically modified organisms, that is, chemicals, processed foods, and a healthcare system that's unraveling like a cheap suit, it's time to prepare. God created herbs, and herbs help man. Our body can heal itself, just sometimes we need assistance. You need some help? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. Our mild detox is quite powerful with its unique blend of eight different herbs. And if you're looking for more, our non GMO supplements will help you with different needs you might have. Health should be a top priority. Take care of your health naturally. Log on to get the tea. Dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Give your body a treat. Let the herbs do their thing naturally. Read all the testimonies on the website. Get the tea dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Sickness and viruses are like intruders and herbs are like warriors. Let the tea work for you. That's get the tea dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. 
Hi, this is Chase Klutzke with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station, where the Fade or Nots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This Mass- is Kyle Mass- Mass- and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Wow. Man, oh man, what a conversation. Barry Strom. Just going to say this really quick. I just tweeted this out. His websites are over at jimmychurchradio.com. You can click on them there. Spiritspredict.com, messagesofheaven.com, and ghostofgoldenlane.com. What a conversation. What a book. Barry Strom. All right, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Very simple. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Hashtag F2BQ are questions. You guys were just amazing tonight, uh, not only on Twitter, but the phone calls are really cool, too. So before I let you go, a couple of things. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, Fatty Fat's half-brother, died today, or actually yesterday, uh, after becoming ill at Kuala Lumpur uh, International Airport in Malaysia. And that's not the interesting part of the story. What's crazy here, his name is Kim Jong-nam. He's the half-brother. There are a few half-siblings in the family, right? Different mom uh, than his dad, Kim Jong-il. Kim Jong-nam said that it felt like someone grabbed or held his face from behind. There are reports that he was attacked by two women and that they used needles. Now, the two women, and these are the reports that are going out now, were seen uh, a couple of different stories that they, they actually saw the attack took place, that the two women escaped, jumped in a car, and have not been seen. Assassins, North Korean assassins, right? He died very quickly in an ambulance. Now, he went up, he went up to a counter there, said, man, I don't feel right. Something just happened. They don't know if uh, if he inhaled something, that there may have been a cloth or something put over his face. He inhaled something or if they used needles. But one thing is for sure. He died minutes after that in an ambulance. And he was able to disclose that somebody grabbed or held his face from behind. How crazy is that now he's been outspoken about North Korea. He has. Um, there were reports that he was, you know, that uh, he was chosen to uh, to get in there and, and maybe become the next leader and, and get a new government going. But he had said publicly that he didn't want to be a third generation leader and he didn't think that was right. All right. He wants what's best for North Korea and that him coming in would not be the way to go and then he was taken out so there you go there's more to this uh, autopsy is going to come up i'm sure that this happened at the airport um also it happened at the low cost terminal i thought that that was an interesting note so does the low cost terminal have video surveillance we really uh, there's more to this story All right, also, the breaking news today for all of you. Here's a gift. Astronomers have spotted more than 100, that's one and two zeros, 100 new potential alien planets, including one in the fourth closest star system to our sun. The reports were released today. This hall of newfound possible exoplanets, which have yet to be confirmed as bona fide alien worlds, by the way, comes from a new analysis of 20 years worth of data gathered by the HIRES, the high resolution uh, shell spectrometer instrument at the Keck Observatory in Hawaii. HIRES was not specifically optimized to do this type of exoplanet uh, detective work, but has turned out to be the absolute workhorse instrument in the field. 
hires. Now, listen to me for a second, just so you know. All right. Get your edge of skin on right now. Hires detects exoplanets using radial velocity. That method. The instrument picks up the tiny gravitational wobbles that orbiting worlds induce in their parent stars. Now, listen to me. I didn't know this. I did my research today. Our sun, Jupiter, okay? ET is out there and they 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 find out, you know, and they find our solar system, right? They're out, they're out, whatever. And and they're looking at us and they're looking for the wobble. I didn't know this. Jupiter swings our sun 500,000 miles at a crack. As it orbits the sun, 500,000 miles, it is moving. I didn't know that. I thought our sun was, was right there. I didn't know that. And that's what Hires does. As a planet swings around and orbits the sun, it's pulling the sun from side to side. Jupiter drags our sun 500 grand. Is that amazing? Now, uh, Kepler, on the other hand, it's a whole different method. They use uh, uh, the tiny brightness that dips are, are caused by uh, when a planet crosses the star's face. And it's called the transit method. And I talk about that all the time. So we're looking at those variations in, in star's brightness. We're out there looking for exoplanets two ways. Is the star actually moving from gravitational pull? which means that a planet is orbiting that sun, or as the planet orbits the sun, is it dipping in front of the sun, or star, I should say, and, uh, and changing it. In this new study, the researchers identified 60 so-called planet candidates, as well as 54 other suggestive signals that require further investigation before they can be elevated to candidate status. But how cool is that? Love it, man. Getting my learn on. 500,000 miles, man. Our planet, Jupiter. Man, doing that. Crazy. All right. Also today, Harrison Ford, that's right, he's in the news, was on board one of his planes that landed on a taxiway down at John Wayne Airport. Happened today and flew over at American Airlines 737. Listen to this. The FAA says... Uh, they don't know if Harrison was actually piloting the plane, but he probably was, by the way. According to the FAA, the actor's Aviat Husky, it's this beautiful single-engine propeller plane, was cleared to land on runway 20L at John Way Airport down in Orange County. The FAA said that the pilot repeated the approved landing clearance back to the air traffic controller, but instead of landing on the runway... The plane landed on a taxiway that runs parallel to the runway, overflying a Boeing 737 that was holding and waiting for him to land. Crazy. The 737-800, operated by American Airlines, had 110 passengers on board with six crew members. Now, they're going to go into an investigation, but apparently the FAA and the NTSB say that, yes, Harrison Ford was indeed aboard his own plane. And there you go. That is Fade to Black. Thank you to Barry Strom. Great conversation tonight. His book is Spirits Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Happy Valentine's Day, Rita. This show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark D. Cobra, LJ3, Renee, Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar, Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, The Planet. Thank you to Barry Strom. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted. 2017 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Tomorrow night, Anna East Salas, right here on Fade to Black. Until then, everybody be safe. 
Go back, Lee Tappy.